The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. March 21st. Let me tell you about the day. Crunchy Taco Day. World Poetry Day. French Bread Day. Single Fair Day. National Fragrance Day. Come on, come on. March 21st, it's today. March 21st, a beautiful day. March 21st, don't go away. March you really suck, huh? You suck. You suck. It's showtime. Nothing, uh, nothing quite like a beautiful singing voice to get your morning underway. Welcome to the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. Talk to me, Cubby. How you doing, son? You're right. We should have started the show with a beautiful singing voice. We missed an opportunity, didn't we? There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing quite like it. We just didn't experience it. We didn't uh, experience anything close to that. Double what? ball busted. Just kidding, Wapple. I'd like to sign you to my label. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who else is on that label? So far, just Wapple. Okay. Yes. We're very unsuccessful, Dana. I'm the best one, at least. Well, you're still not the best one, despite oh. being the only one. Dang. We've had complaints. <laughs> now, I'll check text. I bet we've got some more. I'd like to take a moment to wish all the fellas out there good luck on their vasectomies. It's day one of the NCAA basketball tournament. Unless things have dramatically changed, usually the line at the D doctor is out the door. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even have specials. I got two buddies that took advantage of that. Uh, Separate years. They don't even know each other. But they both got vasectomies over March Madness. There was a special. Yeah, they had, like, it was kind of a joke deal, right? Cause, a, a BOGO? <laughs> <laughs> well, they only have one vast Teflon, or whatever they whatever they cut, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they uh, they ended up taking advantage of this. You know, they had a little bit of a joke going on at the urology clinic. Go in there, they snip them, and then they uh, put a bag of a pea, frozen peas on their nuts for a couple of days. Yep, and you just sit there and watch hoops. What a- drink beer. Dudes, as far as the eye can see, at least years ago, they were lined up to get their nuts muted. Mm-hmm. I used to work with someone. Her dad was uh, is a urologist. Is that what you said, Josh? Is that what you called the snip snip doctor? I'm assuming that's the particular one. Yes, and she would always talk about it. He would mention, too, about how this time of year, they just it was just nonstop. You're working almost damn near around the clock. <laughs> around the what? Crazy. Getting guy. <laughs> I didn't even mean that, but yes, yeah, yeah, just snipping guys left and right. Cutting nuts. Well, you know, a lot of people, they sit in front of the TV anyway, so why not? Mm-hmm. I, uh, one buddy taught me, I didn't realize this, but you have to clear the can, and I thought he said like 50 times to make sure there's nothing left. Whoa. That's, that sounds exhausting. Yeah. In like I mean, a certain oh, timeline? You're talking about <laughs> you're talking about beforehand? After. After. Just oh. to make sure there's right. no residual. Okay. Oh. You know, you want to make sure it works. And because I'm sure maybe somebody that only uh, cleared it 20 times or whatever the number was might have got someone pregnant, right? Right. So it, you asked the timeline? Yeah, it was within three days, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> within three hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story. Sure. You got to you gotta get rid of it to make sure that it's all gone. Making maps, Jesus said he just got his last week, and it's almost ready to take the wife to Pound Town. Good for you. It's always been a, an interesting topic whenever we've discussed it on the program because it's very, uh, is the word polarizing, Josh? Oh, is it? I guess I didn't know it was polarizing. This is my memory, is we get half the dudes in our audience who have had vasectomies. Out of all the dudes in our audience who have had vasectomies, half of them text in and say, it ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a damn string. Oh, I see what you're saying now. And the others say, it it hurts and it still hurts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. Uh, I thought you meant like people were saying, hey, it's a fine procedure and others were very against it for whatever reason. Didn't mean to... Uh, uh, but yeah, you're right. Be unclear there. Some say, hell, I went and played beer league hockey two hours after the procedure, and others say, I'm still not walking right. 
The HVAC Jesus, for example, said he got his uh, right after their second kid, went home, mowed the lawn, and then went back to work. It wasn't that bad for him. Right. Mowed the lawn. And we'll get, we'll get something. I, I, I guarantee you, a dude's texting in right now saying he did not have that same easy peasy type of a experience. Oh. You're dealing with nuts. I mean, they're uh, delicate. They're delicate. How did you, uh, or your your buddy that got the vasect- vasectomy unbeknownst to his wife or girlfriend? I forget. Girlfriend. It was girlfriend. <laughs> That's oh. one of the greatest nights of my life. Now, was it worse, her reaction, or just this, you know, the side, or not side effects, but the results of the procedure? Do you he, remember? How, how did he handle that, the physical part? Well, I just made a reference to somebody who upped and played beer league hockey a couple of years. Oh, uh, was that him? A couple of hours after the procedure. That was him. Same guy. Okay. Yeah. And we had other guys on our beer league hockey team who were also vasectomy victims, um, not, you know, in, in prior years. And when they saw this dude take the ice, they said, how the hell is he doing this? When I got my vasectomy, I couldn't walk for six days, right? So to answer your question, that dude, it was a breeze for him. He had a very easy experience with his vasectomy. He's out there chugging around on the ice. So for the, our uh, for our uh, beer league hockey team, a couple hours. Uh, the the reaction from his girlfriend was much much worse, which was still. I mean, I'm so glad I was there. <laughs> he he gives us all a phone call, couple days after his vasectomy, and says, "I'm I'm dumping a couple of kegs in the garage. Come on over. It's my zero count party." He labeled it his zero count party to celebrate his vasectomy which apparently his live-in girlfriend didn't know about <laughs> mm, that can end a relationship eh, you know he's the type of guy you don't give a rat's ass you know so there we are kind of hanging around the keg and i think i might have been the one that complimented him again on the theme you know i'm not a, a theme party guy josh i'm not you don't like that at all but how often do you get to go to a party that is dedicated to the fact that one of your buddies is no longer able to produce decent sperm you know what i'm talking about (laughs) i've heard of these before where everyone wears white did they go that far (laughs) no 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 just the just the label was all you know any any dork can have a star wars party or a or a whatever this was a really original idea to get together and get drunk simply because of a vasectomy. So I'm standing around the barrel of beer, and I think I said to the dude, I said, zero count party. You know, I complimented him again on the idea. And his girlfriend said, what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I, uh, I went in a few days ago, and I got a vasectomy. And she <laughs> why would you, ah, kind of a thing, and we kept drinking, you know. I, I, I drank through worse than that. <laughs> Did the relationship last a while, or yeah, are they still together? A little while, a little while. Oh, no, so they're, they're not still together. So it wasn't like an immediate we're done. It, it wasn't the end, uh, if I remember right. I think she went up to the bedroom and pouted for an hour, and you know, the thing is, he had made it very clear to her many times that he was not interested in children. All right, so oh, this wasn't right. completely out of the blue. No. But she felt as if she deserved to be notified when he actually went in to get his nuts gas. Yeah, I, I could definitely. understand that. Right. That was a lot of fun that night. That was a lot of fun. Now, this joke took a second for me to get, and, and I hope it's as worth it for you guys as it was for me, from excessive diarrhea Jesus. He said his buddy got a vasectomy, but it turns out all it does is just change the color of the baby's hair. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. <laughs> all right, wait for it. <laughs> How could that possibly happen? Oh, boy. <laughs> I think she got nailed by someone else. Yeah, I think that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think someone else was a party to that. <laughs> ah, so there you go. If you're, uh... If you're just coming to, and today's the day, good luck, boys. Yeah, and, and folks are texting in on both sides of how bad how bad it is afterwards. Isn't that something? I would say overwhelmingly, though, people are saying it was no big deal. I got done. I could do whatever I wanted afterwards. But there are a few that said their experience was completely opposite of that. Yeah. 
it did amaze me when I learned how simple, relatively speaking, of a procedure it is. Like, they don't put you out. They you kind of go there. You lay down. They go. They, they they you know snip, and then you're out. You're out the door. Okay. I've, I guess I, if I've ever heard the details before, I've completely forgotten them. You don't go under. No. All right. They just kind of numb it down, snip you, and you and the next guy in. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I mean. I mean, I had a lung operation where I didn't go under. That's crazy. When to I me. was a kid, so it's kind of I don't I don't know how far we could take this conversation, but you know, certain procedures where you think, well, by God, you're unconscious, right? You're really not. Well, Josh, you talk about when you got your wisdom teeth out, you weren't completely knocked out, right? Because well, I was put like right to sleep. No, oh, no, I, I was. Oh, you were? Yeah, oh, they. Okay. they I asked not to be, and the guy's like, no, you're going to fight me on it too much. I got to put you out. You guys were, uh, Ashley and Josh, you were both completely asleep when they yanked out your wisdom teeth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah same here. I, what? Best sleep ever. Oh, hell, hell no. I mean, I was. Uh, what about you, Wapo? Were you unconscious? I never had wisdom teeth. Oh, good for you. Lucky you. Yeah. yeah. I was, really? You can be born without wisdom teeth? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I and had no idea. Yeah, and then um, when I had my jaw surgery, they oh. were just going to take my wisdom teeth out then, but they couldn't find them. I, I right. associate the word wisdom with Wapo. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't, you didn't have the teeth, huh? Yeah. Yeah, some folks get lucky and never Shocker. grow them, but... Uh, <laughs> No, I wasn't asleep. They uh, just got me higher than a giraffe's ass, and it was an absolute riot. You guys kind of missed out. <laughs> oh, I, I have, I've had laughing gas before. It's uh, it's wonderful. Oh, I had such a riot when they were pulling up my wisdom teeth. I could not stop laughing. I thought it was the greatest thing that's ever... I, uh, the do- I remember... <laughs> there's very little I remember, but I, I do remember the dentist saying, look, you have to stop laughing. Because I was just... I was laid back in the chair just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder why they made us go out. I don't know. Something... Maybe they just didn't like our personalities. Just, he's he's a lot better when he's asleep. That couldn't be possible. Maybe not, not in it. your case, John. I know no. it was the one of the biggest reasons for me is because I get like such bad anxiety before any type of medical procedure. So they're like, "Yeah, let's give her give her some extra." Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. That's got to be tough. You are oh, all yeah. you get Especially extra. Someone like yourself, yeah, who I goes get, to the doctor a lot. I get very very stressed out. Yeah, it, it, they can always tell. Uh, I've had doctors and nurses even point it out because I'll start talking a lot more. Because I'm uncomfortable and uh, like trying to make jokes about serious situations. Trying to make jokes about serious situations. You don't just make your average Oli and Lena joke. You joke about cancer or something. <laughs> no, what do you like, What do you mean like by make that? Make jokes about like, hey, you know, don't kill me or don't oh, shoot. Oh, I see. <laughs> like, what is you wrong guys with aren't going to touch me while I'm asleep, are you? Yeah, because like <laughs> <laughs> you can if you want to do it. I'm just saying. Trucker insurance. Jesus said he had a buddy get snipped hours after the procedure. His three year old kicked him square in the nuts. Oh no! Right in the nuts. And then he was reminded. Why why he got the procedure right there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could go down, we could go down this route now, those horror stories of people who have major operations and they get put under and then they wake up in the middle oh, of it. That's, oh, yeah. That's happened to my wife every time. Oh, wow. She has uh, some, I don't know if it's an immunity or ah! what, but the normal amount of whatever they give you doesn't work. So they have to dope, they've learned that and they have to dope her up even more. Yes, I <laughs> am, uh, I am, uh, very close with someone who has that problem and i want to hear i, I want to say there was some crazy story about how it's more common for people with a certain hair color oh yeah redheads so you've heard the same thing yeah yep. I think we've talked about this oh, yes. we have? yeah somebody texted in and said that was true you want to know why i didn't remember that i had my wisdom teeth taken oh, out. oh yeah see <laughs> yeah all my wisdom was, yeah, so I, I know someone who has that problem, and, and they can tell you a firsthand story. They were under the, they were under sedation. They were having a major damn operation, and then they, they just <gasps> woke the hell up. That's so terrifying. The, the, the doctor had to just decide just to strangle her. Oh. <laughs> Until she went unconscious Get again. Back down. They said we don't have any medication that works. They just wrapped their hands around her throat and <laughs> Didn't that- you know a woman who died during childbirth due to strangulation? Yes, I did. You did. Years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Holland Your Wood Jesus said uh, he got the camera in the pee hole just like I did. Uh, I did last year. 
and he said that uh, he thinks I probably agree with him that we wish we were out. Yeah, that one that would have been a nice procedure to put you out. Sure, I yeah. bet. Uh-huh. That is uncomfortable. I was awake, or I woke up when I got uh, an endoscopy, so I got a camera down my throat. That was terrifying. The the doctor said, I don't remember too much of it, but he said that I tried to pull the camera out of my throat. And he, had, he was oh. like, oh my gosh, give her more, give her more. Gas her up. <laughs> yeah, you know, all the... All that gas and drugs and whatnot that they load you up on when you're in the hospital for something major, it can turn, some people turn squirrely. I loved it when I got anesthesia. <laughs> That's oh, the only... It was so cool. I, I don't know if you what you call that, but, you know, I know caffeine's a drug, whatever, but I think that's the only real drug I've ever done is that laughing gas, and I could see why people break into <laughs> dentist offices. I'm like, <laughs> now, obviously, if you take, it's... The, the doses can kill you. Yeah. But that was pretty fun. I mean, when I was when I had my lung operation, I was 14 years old. And so I don't know. I don't know um, how much of this is true because I was a kid and I believed everything that adults told me at the time. I, I, I believe I was on morphine at one point or another. Wow. Oh, I bet. Okay, uh, this is again a long time ago, but I did, <clears throat> I guess, really crack my family up because I was so twisted on, maybe it was morphine, maybe it wasn't, I'll, I'll just go along with it for the sake of the conversation, but apparently I just said some, I said some really outlandish stuff, and my folks and my brother and sister were just having a blast with this, they just couldn't wait to stop by and see me at the hospital because they didn't know what the hell was going to come out of my mouth. Apparently, at one point or another, the whole family walks in, and I pointed at my sister and mom and dad, and I said, You, you, and you, get the F out of here right now. You, you, and you, my mom, dad, and my sister, get out. <laughs> out. And they're looking behind themselves like, who the hell is he talking to? <laughs> Bogus. <laughs> and I said, Steve can stay, my brother. That's he surprising. Stay. Oh, because you wanted to kill him? No. Oh. No. It, that is surprising. Normal me would have... He would have not been my choice. Yeah. Morphine me, I wanted my brother to stay in the room. Everyone else was to get out, right? So they left. And I told my brother, this is the story. They, I told my brother, we're getting out of here. <laughs> you're breaking me out of here. I don't care what you have to do. You have to kill someone, kill them. But you're getting me out of here. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. And he, and, and he laughed in my face. You know, it, it, it can make you crazy. I had a procedure once where, you know, they put me under when I came back. The, I, there was people standing around me, like some of the nurses and stuff, and they were kind of looking at, like, what's, go, what's he going to say next? They were telling me that all I kept doing was screaming for Dr. House, the old television show. <laughs> yes! <laughs> saying, He's the only doctor I want to see. Where's Dr. House? Uh. I wish I could remember something like that, or cameras were super prevalent. Like sure. they were, Because I still kind of don't believe him, but there was enough people there where they must have been telling me the truth. And I was watching that show like crazy back then. So it would kind of make awesome. sense. Uh, man. <laughs> Demanding a TV doctor come to your aid. <laughs> Although, and if you've watched the show, if you've watched House before, you, you get the reference. I knew whatever I had, it wasn't lupus because it's never lupus. Yes. <laughs> never lupus. <laughs> never lupus. Oh, and, or sarcoidosis. It's never sarcoidosis either. <laughs> what was the show again, Josh? House. Never saw it. You know, my dad told me to watch it. And uh, I thought the previews looked so cheesy and stupid. I thought it looked like the guy was trying too hard to be snarky, but I really got into the show. Oh, I loved that show. Yeah, that was a really good one. There you go. Uh, I'm trying to I'm read through text messages here, and we have an opposing view from someone who should know um, from Anesthesia Jesus. He said, please don't talk about people waking up in surgery again. It doesn't really happen. It's a fallacy from Anesthesia Jesus. Well... I don't. I was told my wife did twice. I maybe it wasn't anesthesia then. I don't yeah. know. My my boyfriend. Yeah, I don't want to put the wrong information out there, but I swear that. I mean, she was two procedures where they put you under. I I. I okay, are we using the wrong term? Is this a technicality? Uh, I wonder. I, 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 ne- I never said and just for the record, doctor, whatever your name. I never said anesthesia. I just said they were under. I don't know what the hell they were on, but yeah. they woke up during surgery. We're, yeah, not, my, we're, not, we're not making this stuff up. My I, boyfriend woke up during surgery. Um, he was getting, he had a hernia. And so they were like going in through your, his belly button or whatever. And he said he woke up and he was like trying to blink really clearly so that the doctor 
was like, oh, oh, dude's oh, awake. <laughs> they oh. went in through his belly button. Yeah, isn't where that did crazy? They, where did they want him to go in? <laughs> where, where did he want him to go in? <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, we're not trying to start any trouble, no, doctor. Yeah, get back uh, to us. Tell us the right thing to say then. We're yeah. not making this stuff up. Yeah. Tell us if we misspoke. Certainly, uh, no offense meant. Here's Spe- the, special what? ed teacher, she's just said she had her unborn twin removed from her uterus was awake during the procedure. What? Holy heck. S- say that again? She had an unborn twin removed from her uterus while she was still awake. They didn't knock her out for that. What? Oh, that's crazy. God dang. How does that work? Holy cow. Here's from a redhead. I don't know if he wants me to say his name. I woke up in the middle of a procedure, ripped out the tubes and gauze, jumped into a snowbank outside the hospital. Nurses had to drag me back in and lay me down on the table while I was giggling like crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what they, if that was laughing gas or what was going on there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. One of my oldest buddies went to the hospital for something or another. He was on vacation down in Mexico or something, so there's a very good chance that his reason for hospitalization was drug and alcohol related, but he he ended up in the hospital. You know, they put the gown on you, your ass naked. He's hooked up to all kinds of this and that. And uh, right when they thought he was, you know, settled in and okay, sir, you know, we'll just let you rest for a few hours. He got up, apparently, and pulled all the wires out, and they found him walking down the streets of uh, Mazatlan with, with his ass hanging out the back of his uh, gown. <laughs> Think about how many people you have to get through to get out that door, well, too. Uh, but I don't know what it was like in this Mexican hospital. Oh, you know that's what I mean? I, I don't know. All I know is they found him walking the streets. Oh, I'd like to think he like had to fight off some people on the way out. And he might have. <laughs> he was the type. This was my buddy, Josh, that had the greatest drug smuggling story of all time. Oh, yeah. I can't believe he got away with that. That's insane. One of the greatest drug smuggling stories of all time. He went over to Europe specifically to buy drugs and bring them back to America. Crap. He was being a good American. Go <laughs> go get some drugs from Europe, bring them back to America. Yep. Uh, the story is that he, just like you see in the movies... He taped all the drugs to his legs and such. And, uh, and of course, he's he's on drugs as he <laughs> is walking through the airport. And they pull him aside. I don't know where he was. Somewhere's in Europe. That's a big chunk of land, so I, I don't know. I, I, I've i never asked you this, I don't think. Do I know this person? You've never met him. Okay. I, was, never, I don't know why I've never asked. It seems like maybe I'm just so enthralled with the story I'd never thought to ask. He hasn't been around for years, but God, he's just a wonderful guy. A little shady, a little shady, uh, obviously. I'm telling a drug smuggling story, but just, uh, I mean, I almost get uh, misty-eyed because the guy just means a lot to me. We, we, we've known each other forever. So he gets pulled aside, and he's going to be searched He gets pulled into an office, and he's one of the greatest con men BSers of all time. He could talk you into anything. And somehow, somehow, he talked the airport security into leaving him alone. And they, whatever it was he said, they bought it. And so, while he's alone, He takes off his pants, he removes all the drugs, he hides them in a desk in this office where he has been pulled into by airport security. He gets his pants back on, they come back to the door, you know, sir, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. They search him. He's got nothing on him, of course. Everything's stashed in the desk. Well, most people at that point would just run for their effing freedom, right? Yes. Just get me on that airplane so I can get home because, my God, I just came close to spending the rest of my life in a prison It's somewhere in Europe. No, he, because he's the way he is, he talks them into leaving him alone again. And when they left him alone, he puts the drugs back on his person and, and, and leaves town in an airplane. That's crazy. Wow. Sweet yeah. talker. 
Oh, yeah, you, you wouldn't believe it. He could be in a movie or something. And he's a good-looking son bitch too. Ashley, that, I'm sure that helps. Yeah, yeah. It, does. it definitely he, does. Ashley, I, I'm, I'm telling you this. If he walked in here right now, you'd forget all about that scrawny boyfriend you had. <laughs> oh, he's that good-looking. And that good of a talker. It's not all looks. Yeah, you got to have some charisma. I like that. Oh, you. Would. I think yeah, good-looking people can get get away with a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hear studies where they get paid more. Everything they yeah. they get a little more. He put the drugs back on his body, and then the security comes back in. Okay, you're free to go. Okay, see you guys later. <laughs> what a friggin' lucky wow. bat! But he's lucky, but he's also that damn good. First and foremost, to uh, a particular texter, I thought we were friends. You know, I thought we had that type of relationship, but ask me from CrossFit, Jesus said I was had, and he made me look like a damn fool. The story about the guy who woke up and ran into the snowbank, pulling all the tubes out, apparently is from Fargo. I've never seen the movie, so I'm sorry I didn't get the reference. Uh, I don't know. You guys know what he's talking about? It's been years since I've seen it. I I missed the joke. I'm sorry. Dude. I I just hadn't seen the movie. Well, you're you're not the only one. I I have no memory of that. Fargo, that was a long time ago. Oh, God, that was gas right there. I heard it. Yeah, you you get that sometimes. Put me under. (laughs) That'll fix it. All right, there you go. Speaking of text messages, got one right when we started the show. Man, I I think it kind of sets the tone for today. It's Thursday, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You know how, Josh, you know how on Fridays I don't care at all? That's one of the first things you tell me when you walk in the door to the studio. Don't care. Uh, that's starting to bleed into Thursdays a little bit. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> it's start- but anyway, here's the text I received that said, Good morning, you sluts. Good start. Yeah, good way to describe us. Let's F today in its face. <laughs> <laughs> we shall when we return on the half ass Morning Show. half ass Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. What companies would you want to work for? Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the prestigious Just Capital 2024 seal. Bank of America is ranked number one in the banking industry and number one for their ongoing commitment to workers, offering best-in-class benefits, including a minimum wage of $25 an hour by 2025. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. Here we go. Vasectomies. We were talking about vasectomies a few minutes ago. Today's day one of the NCAA basketball tournament, and it's kind of a tradition, it seems, the last number of years. A lot of dudes sign up for their vasectomies, get the nut bag straightened out, then you sit at the uh, at the house drinking beer and watching basketball until you can't stand it anymore. So we got a lot of text messages on vasectomies and people's varying experience, well, men's varying experiences with the operation. Got a couple texts from guys who went back to work too soon after a vasectomy and they blew their stitches out. Just blew them right into the back of their pants. Yeah, that, uh, that'd be, I don't know, I think I'd take that pretty seriously for Doc. Well, maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. Because <laughs> if they said, you can blow your stitches out, maybe I'd be a little more inclined to, but if they just say, you shouldn't do this or that for a while, I might disregard it. Maybe they need to give graphic details as to what could happen. Yeah. Well, I think if you and I worked a labor job, a hard labor job, hell no, I ain't going to work until the doctor says I'm all right. Well, I, I, pretty got, much, I got nothing to prove to any of those hard-ons over at the uh, work site. You can ask some of my former co-workers. I pretty much would just hide out in the porta potty all day, especially uh, when the real mm-hmm. tough stuff was going on. So I w- it wasn't that strenuous for me. I never did anything that would bust a uh, stitch. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you go back to the job site, all your bros are just going to be pricks to you for a few days anyway, right? After getting a vasectomy? Oh, yeah. Look, look uh, at this guy says, I got my nuts snipped. I went back to work. Now they call me cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to be I don't want to be called cream pie. I'm going to stay away as long as possible because I know how those... Uh, I know how those warehouse dudes operate. I worked a lot of warehouse jobs before this nightmare kicked in. Yeah, oh, I know. Gonna, they'll give you the worst jobs. Yeah, I'm going to give it time. I'm going to give that that headline, Nick gets vasectomy. I want that to go away. Yeah. <laughs> give, it, give it a few days. Actually, you know, so back when I was landscaping, there was a dude that would, we figured him out, he would hide. Anytime we're moving rock or something like that, the tough stuff, he'd be in the porta potty for a long time. He got a lot of hell, that guy. He kind of deserved it. They blew their stitches right out the back. Ooh, we Into the back of their underwears, and they went through the underwears and into the back of the pants. A couple guys said, a couple guys texted in and said, yeah, I could have gone to work. I could have gone right back to work after their vasectomy. You want to know why they didn't, Josh? Why? Because they hate their job. They just didn't want to. Yeah. This person says, I'm going for a vasectomy consultation today. You're not helping, you dicks. No pun intended, he said. <laughs> well, I, maybe you missed it earlier. We were saying most people texting in said it was super easy. Kind of like what Nick's saying. They went back to work. You know, not a big deal. Most people. But there are a couple that said it was anything but easy. And also, we got on the topic of there are certain people who are more apt to wake up during surgery. It's very scary stuff. You're having this or that corrected. They're pulling this or that out of you, and you wake up. Whatever it is you're under, you sit up. Or at least wake up. Got a text from a... from a dude. He says, I woke up while doctors were performing surgery on my thumb when I was 16 years old. And, uh, I guess... I woke up and I stood up and I yelled, it effing hurts. (laughs) He says, all I remember after that is getting pushed down by four people and a mask being put on me. Oh, no, no. Sleep, my son. (laughs) Sleep. Tears on my lubricant, Jesus, said his brother got one done. He asked for a discount because he was born with only one testicle. You should get a discount (laughs) for something like that. No kidding. Cream Pie's listening oh. to the show right now. Everyone say hello to Cream Pie. Hey, hello. Cream Pie. Hey, cream pie. Okay. That, uh, that is such a disgusting term. Long time no see. You you, you know the guy? No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, fine. What if he go. said yes? I'm, I'm your dad. <laughs> what? Oh. What if Dana said what? Dana's dad is Cream Pie yeah. Jesus. Oh, I said it. God, I hate it. <laughs> All right, this year, first stupid news story pretty much explains why there was never an episode of the old Dukes of Hazard television show called Bo and Luke Go to Cambodia. <laughs> because the Cambodian prime minister, dude, oh, he effing hates those musical car horns. He put a nationwide ban on musical car horns. And if you remember, in the old television show, the characters Bo and Luke Duke, they used to rip around their home county of Hazard playing some silly song out from under the hood of their Dodge Charger. I think the song was called Dixie. Let me see if I've got I know I've got it. I loved that. When I watched that show as a kid, I absolutely loved it. And they named their car the General Lee. Now back... There they are, right? Now, back when I was 11 years old, I thought the Duke boys were pretty cool, but you know, it dawned on me later in life, Cubby, that they were douchebags. What makes you say that? If you're just an average dickhead and you assign a name to your car without sarcasm, eight times out of ten, you're a douchebag. Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> What, what name? Wait a minute. You never <laughs> named your car Uh-oh. without I, sarcasm. No, I never. My wife named her car without sarcasm. Oh, no. But I, Why did she do that? I think you'd is appreciate she, it. Is she a douchebag? No, she's not a douchebag. She doesn't never, even use one. She has nothing to do with the douchebag. She's never <laughs> given. I don't think she does. I guess I don't Well, know. I did say eight times out of ten. If you assign your car a name without sarcasm, you're a douchebag. I suppose she could be. Why did she name? What is the name of a? So she had a Jeep Wrangler. Uh-huh. Army Green. Yeah. And she called it Sergeant Slaughter. 
That's pretty good, though. I like that name. Yeah, you too. That's cool. That is... Is that an exception to the, the rule? Those two exceptions. All right, those, good. Those two out of ten. I'll go along. Like I said, it was only eight out of... Not every... Not ten out of ten. Eight out of ten. Uh, because, you know, I, I got... I had a buddy who had a yellow pile of garbage car. What did he call it? Go ahead. Yellow pile of garbage car. Twinkie? Taxi Ooh, car? Lightning bolt. Decent guesses in there. The pisser. <laughs> pisser. That's, yeah. that's fun. That's fun because it's sarcastic. I just had the Chevy Lumina and I always called it the Luminator. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. When you dropped someone off, did you say, I'll be back? <laughs> no, I didn't. I should have too. And so here's the deal. He never had anyone in his car with him. Huh? He never had anybody in his car with him to drop off. <laughs> Ouch. What the hell? What's going on over Ow. there between you and Wampa? <laughs> yeah. Three times today. They feud. Oh, is Just, that right? Was that a third time? Uh, yeah. Uh, I quickly my, forget my, these my, things. My singing voice, uh, I don't have wisdom teeth, so I have no wisdom, and now that one. This is a great day. Well, if I could, we all kind of jumped in on those first two. Now I feel bad. <laughs> I didn't realize there were multiple hits on Wapple today. I right. have three nuts, apparently. Been kicked in all three. <laughs> Here's the damn deal on this Cambodian prime minister and his attitude towards musical car horns. Now, some might say if you have a musical car horn, you're automatically a douchebag. And, and they might be right, but here's the deal. Uh, this uh, prime minister, he goes by the name of Hun Manette. He went ahead and dumped a ban on musical car horns because, oh, he also hates dancing. <laughs> and apparently, young people in Cambodia are known to start dancing when they hear a musical car horn going off on the street. <laughs> Is this Footloose? Yes. <laughs> This guy rooted for the, uh, the priest in Footloose. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, and I'm not much of a dancer, but it would never even occur to me that I should start dancing to a musical car horn. Hey, Wapple. Yo. Tell Dana and Ashley, I was hoping to get through this without a Footloose reference. <laughs> tell them that. Man, I was really hoping I'd get through this day without a Footloose reference. Uh, he got, he got <laughs> burned. Uh, little bit of re little oh. revenge on Dana and Ashley. <laughs> That's easy stuff, isn't it, to make a Footloose reference, isn't it, Wapple? Yeah, it is. Too easy. <laughs> You're yeah. above that. Now, Wapple what say... What are we going to cut loose? <laughs> hey, now, Wapple say, hey, I'm just kidding. I respect you guys as co-workers. Hey, I'm just kidding. I respect you guys so much as co-workers. Now go, psych, you both suck. Psych, you guys all suck. There you oh. go. Man. <laughs> Got you a couple times in a row. Yeah, kind of took the wind out of my sails there. <laughs> The young you people in camp. Butts. Huh? <laughs> Too oh. far, Wapple. Too far. Oh, you know, people do that. I don't get it. Did you don't just say it. eat butt? He yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Wait, wait. Take that. Dude. You know, Josh and I over here, we're just trying to give you a little push, right? It and went then, too and far. Then, and then you went too far with it. Yeah. No. Trying to give you a little help, and now you're... You're out of control. You don't want to be the butt eater guy, Wapple. <laughs> <laughs> and you've kind of made yourself that. Yeah. Uh, Although I did, did. I did enjoy that. The <laughs> young people in Cambodia will up and dance on the sidewalk or in the street when they hear a musical car horn. So the prime minister, he doesn't like that. Videos ended up on Cambodian social media showing people dancing on the streets and on the roadsides as cars go by blasting their silly car horn songs. So Prime Minister Manette has ordered the cops to go ahead and rip a horn smooth out of a motor vehicle if they encounter anybody honking their musical car horns. He said that dancing affects public order and poses a traffic hazard that was a threat to life and limb. So shut it, he says. Doesn't like that music. He said, what's the name of that group? Public Enema? <laughs> what the hell is a public enema? Shut up all that damn noise. What movie? House Party, what year? 1990. He doesn't like music. And all the young people have the musical car horns. He's putting a friggin' stop to it, and he's doing it right now, Cubby. So odd. But I guess, you know, if people are 
Like that, uh, what was the the TikTok challenge where people get out and dance and then they all died? Oh, yeah. It was like oh. a name of a rapper or a oh, song or something yeah. like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Well, while you're, while you're thinking something of that. Whip. Ghost what? Riding the Whip? Yeah, Ghost Riding the Whip. Oh, is whip. that what it's called? Oh, okay. It's, I think I, so. I thought it was easier than that. Um, what do you think of this name for a car, Nick? Oh, I, I, okay, lay it on me. All right, so the person had a Nissan Sentra, and he called it Liam Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, and he I, said the car had a special set of skills before he totaled them R.I.P. Like I, <laughs> like I said, the only time I have a problem with it, the only time it makes you a douchebag is if you give your car a name and there is no sarcasm involved. Then eight times out of ten. Again, don't come after me saying this. It's only eight times. I mean, the, the old the, a garbage Ford Taurus. Who wants it? Uh, the tortoise? That probably is a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. Tortoise. But that's not where I'm going with this. Uh, I can't believe you haven't heard of this. A garbage Ford Taurus. It's all beat up. You call it? The clitoris. Oh! <laughs> it's beat <Boy>. up. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I don't Got find it. those to be garbage at all. Trash Trucker Jesus one. deals with garbage, and he mentioned, uh, you know, when we're telling Wapo what to say to the other guys, he said, it's kind of like teaching your little cousin how to swear. That's a little bit what it was <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I remember my oldest trying to get my youngest when he was very little uh, to say the F word or something like that, or give well, the finger. That's a great example of what happened there with Wapo, because you might teach a kid, hey, the S word, hey, GD, you know what I'm saying, right? 30 seconds later, the kid's calling people the CS. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't tell you that one. We had a, a swearing night one night when the, the kids were little, and just to see which ones they knew, because one of them threw out a swear word, and we're like, all right, let's just see how far we can go. And I was shocked. Yeah. There's a couple I had to look up on Urban Dictionary and think, <laughs> oh, my God, how did they hear that? And they were really little. I'm talking, like, maybe second grade and kindergarten. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think their mom talked. And by the way, I want to be clear. I wasn't calling all Ford Tauruses garbage. I was saying if you have a Ford Taurus and it's old and it turns to garbage, then you give it. You see where I'm going with that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, how about this one? An old Mazda 626. You call it the Mazda Rotti. <laughs> <laughs> I had a buddy who had a 626. Sweet Word? ride. I thought that was a sweet ride. I had one of those for a while until my first wife crashed it. The Ford Tour ass. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I've right. heard the other one that Nick mentioned, but not that one. If any of you uh, if any of you uh, are unfortunate enough to find yourselves in stupid England, don't order any food to be delivered. The delivery drivers, they'll just up and bite your thumb off for you. Oh. They will. The headline right here, it says right here. UK food delivery driver who bit customer's thumb clean off over pizza dispute pleads guilty. So there you go. This was over a year ago, and the story is now being sorted out in court. Says here an English lady who was filling in for a friend as a delivery driver pled guilty to what they call here grievous bodily harm. A customer dude says she bit off his thumb for him when the two of them got into an argument. The gal with the funny appetite for human flesh and bone is called Jennifer Roca. She's 35. According to the story, Miss Roca was acting as a substitute delivery driver. She was working for a joint called... Deliveroo. Oh, nice. <laughs> so she was uh, filling in a couple years ago. A 36-year-old dude named Steven Jenkinson ordered a pizza pie. When the delivery gal showed up with the dude's pie, the two of them got all uppity with each other over this and that. They started arguing, and that's when the delivery lady bit down on a player's thumb and didn't let go. The dude tried to shake her loose, like when you, like, maybe a, a litter of puppies, you know, you're petting one of them, it bites onto your thumb, you're like, hey, son of a bitch, get up. The dude tried to shake her loose, but she kept that bite locked in. She did. When she finally did turn the guy loose, he says his thumb was spraying blood everywhere, oh. and sure as hell, dude ended up thumbless above the knuckle. It's never oh. good when blood is spraying. <laughs> she, 
I'll, I'll, I'll go along with that. Yes, uh, she bit <laughs> it smooth off. Now, this is interesting right here. Doctors were able to graft part of his big toe to where his thumb used to be. Now we're talking. But it sucks to have a toe thumb for this dude. Yeah. He says he's like a plum- athlete hand or something. Yeah. <laughs> he says he's a plumber and he hasn't been able to work oh. since his thumb came off. He's had to relearn basic life skills like tying his shoes. Why do people tie their shoes? Who are these people? That's me doing an imitation of Gilbert Gottfried doing an imitation of Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) Uh, Financially, the guy says he's ruined. I'm unemployed. I'm in a lot of debt. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Dude, that sucks. A sentencing hearing for the thumb biter offer lady is coming up in a couple of months. What do you think is a fitting punishment, Cubby? Do you take one of her digits off for Yeah, an eye for an eye. Huh? You take both. But then you also tell her an opportunity she missed. You bite it off and go... I'll keep the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Scooter Jesus said you put anal in front of almost every vehicle and it's hilarious. I'm going to try it with mine. Anal ram. Yeah, I don't think it's funny. I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anal fusion. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's funny about that either. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Dude, anal ranger. <laughs> Waffle. Text that listener back and tell him he's right. Scooter Jesus, you've come up with something it's here. It's funny every time. <laughs> what Mine the hell does... Anal 3. <laughs> uh, that's not funny yeah, at all. Okay. That you that's, ruined it. You should have left that to yourself. That's not, <laughs> that's not even a little bit funny. Yeah, yeah. that's why I didn't join, Waffle. <laughs> why did you say it? Because so far we got anal ram, anal fusion, and anal ranger. Why did you even say anal 3? <laughs> it's not funny at all. And he was... Kind of like WAP, uh, you know? He was oh. going to ask me. No, no, I was just kind of... Was I? I don't it, think so. He's giving you a like look. Was, now yeah. I'm on Dana and Ashley's side. Dude, you don't have what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot Cocoa Jesus has an anal rogue. <laughs> oh, delivery driver Jesus. Anal terrain. <laughs> oh, how about this one? Anal raptor. Oh, hey, wow. This is good. This is the phone call I want to make. I want to call the anal escort. Uh, <laughs> a, a, how do you say that? Anal escort? Escort, yeah. Anal explorer. Did I we had cover it, that I had one an yet? Escort. Anal, yeah. anal wrangler. Anal outback. Ah. <laughs> That's right. All right, where are we now? What time is it? Oh, we got to get going. What does this one say? There's a dude in Georgia. He's all pissed off. He is. Because somebody stole his sex dominoes. What are those? Yeah, it's real easy. Uh, you'll figure it out. The sex dominoes were stolen. And they don't just belong to him. They belong to his lady, too. They use them together. Uh, here's the deal. The guy in Georgia says someone at a moving company swiped his sex dominoes. Oh, and also uh, his uh, iPad, whatever that is. So two things. Someone was moving him. A company was moving him. Summers. Uh, but first, if you're wondering what sex dominoes are, you've seen gimmicks like this before. It's a set of dominoes with sexually stimulating rewards on the back. You know what I'm saying? You're playing a little... Do- oh, touch my thigh. You know, those stupid mm. card games. We had My wife, for one of our anniversaries, got me one of those card games, and it was really stupid. They're so dumb. They're I always mean, dumb. It's yeah. always like... Massage their ear. No, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Look them in the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Com- only- come up with three compliments. Uh, right. No romance, please. It's garbage. But this guy loved his sex dom- dominoes. Uh, well, we'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt. There maybe there's some really good stuff on this set of sex dominoes because he's pissed. I mean, it, it, sure, it's the principle of the thing that someone stole this or that from you, but he really he misses his sex dominoes. Him and his lady. If, if you're ever going to play those games, you write them out yourself. You see what I'm saying to you? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, it's going to be way better. Because you can be ten times as filthy as... Okay. Dude called the cops to report the theft of his sex dominoes. He said one of the movers took the damn things. And he told the police that if the suspect is identified, he does want to press charges. Go ahead, son. Get him. You can't just ignore the fact that some punk snatched your sex dominoes. Go get them. Anal probe. Anal expedition. Anal flex. Two more. Anal escape. 
<laughs> the one that, a- anal dart, anal charger. <laughs> the one that almost made me burst out laugh when I read it was anal rodeo. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, what are you guys doing this weekend? <laughs> oh, anal pilot. <laughs> anal challenger. Oh, you guys are geniuses. Thank you for these texts. Now you feel really, real silly about that anal three, don't you, Wobble? You got oh, yeah. anal fiesta. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anal legacy. Let's go to the front door here real quick. If you think we're all done with genitalia talk, you ain't heard nothing yet. Here's a gal over there. Where is she? Friggin' England. Unbelievable. She says she was born with two vaginas. And she has two boyfriends, one for each one for each of them. Now that's living right there. Don't you think? For her? For everybody. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be uh, one of the boyfriends. Mm-mm. She's a 25-year-old lady by the name of Emily Charlotte. To be very specific, I mean, I wouldn't want to... Just because she's got two vaginas, that means that we're not exclusive. Not that there's... That I'd be like, ah, oh, two vaginas, get out of here. I'm not going <laughs> to not gonna date you. <laughs> I've only got one penis. What do I need with a lady with two vaginas? <laughs> Word is she caught a rare condition called uterus didelphus. Two wombs, two cervixes, double the vag, double the action. Like I say, she has two boyfriends. They each take one on separate nights. She says it's not cheating because they each have a vagina all to themselves. (laughs) I dig it. She found out she had doolies uh, back when she was 16. It took that long. Yeah, some kind of exam. Yeah, I guess maybe you thought it was normal. Well, wait a minute. Now that I'm thinking about it, why did it take that long? Well, I don't think it was like super... I think there's like one... I don't even know how to say it without getting in trouble. Ah, forget it. We'll We'll just live with it. I think it's more like a technical thing. Like, you're expecting a one-bedroom apartment. You walk down the hallway. Whoa, there's over to the right. There's another apartment. Oh, mm. I get you. Yeah, if it was to the right or left, okay, now I understand why they didn't spot it. Till you got to go in a vestibule first. Oh. Yeah, it's not just two <laughs> doors on the outside. Anal vestibule. Yeah, more like a, a condo building than a, a double bungalow. <laughs> anal bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> anal wrangler. Angle, uh, anal fury. Anal town and country. Anal pathfinder. Anal hummer. Anal canyon. More cars coming in. <laughs> anal blazer. Anal How does this work so well? <laughs> Can we do it with radio stations? Anal 3X. <laughs> <laughs> anal 95. Anal fan. <laughs> Anal Care 11 <laughs> Alright, I, I, we gotta stop Because we'll do it all day long uh, This gal, if she wanted to let her buck She could make two babies with two different men at the same time She has two periods Oh, I'd be pissed Oh, and she's on OnlyFans. Check it out, Cubby. You can watch her two separate boyfriends go headlong after her two separate virginas if you hand her some money. She's on OnlyFans. That's pretty cool. Play to your strengths. Doctors say they don't know why the condition occurred, possibly from a toilet seat. (laughs) She's Uh, a little Lindsay Lohan-ish. Oh, I didn't look at her pictures. Can I see the Lindsay Lohan-ish double vagina lady from all the way over in England? Well, (laughs) she's very pretty. Yeah, I don't mind her at all. Here's another one for you. She looks like, you know what she looks like, too. She got ass. Oh, definitely. Here's one for you. That's a butt picture. Yeah, she's got a backyard. I'm a supporter. She's this, gorgeous, uh, yeah. This happens, uh, it says here it happens, uh, one out of every 3,000 women's. Hmm. That, ah, that's not as rare as I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree. assume it was way more rare. Do I have time for one more? Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, for sure. 
You've been a great crowd. You have been. A lot of anal jokes. And thank you for that. Yeah, been fun. I needed that. What is this now? Oh, some of you don't even want me to tell this here next story. Some of you are going to wish that I do what the government told me to do and keep the truth a secret, just like we did here on our show during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it says here now, then. Playing computer games can increase your risk of erectile dysfunction. Oh, no! Hmm. Huh. Says here, too much screen time is literally making men. S A W F T. Soft. Well, it doesn't get any more legit than that report right there. Uh, here's how they added this all up. This is a hell of an operation. Uh, researchers, Chinese researchers, found this out. It doesn't get any more legit than that. Uh, they, uh, how do you say this? They uh, observed over 200,000 dudes. They did. Dudes from 40 years old to 69. <laughs> Dudes from 40 to 69. Everybody kept it in. Okay. Which I thought was nice. I, I braced myself. I did. <laughs> See what you did there, Josh? What? Nothing. What did Josh do? Uh, he said uh, everybody kept it in or held it in. No, I thought that was nice. I did think it was nice. All right, let's just go to break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really interested in this, actually. And I want to say, before you get started, in my experience, I wonder if any other women will agree, the, the people that I've been with that are, like, huge video game nerds, usually the best in bed. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm not doubting it. I've just never heard something like Maybe that Maybe it's, before. like, constantly, you know, with the thumbs on, the, well, on here, their control. Uh, here's the thing. They're good with their hands, you mean. Here's the thing. There's there's an underlying fact to the research that I'm about to give you. Um, I also assume there's an underlying fact to the data you just dumped on us, Ashley. So you're saying these video gamers are excellent in bed. Yep. Okay. Would these video gamers happen to be between the ages of like 18 and 28? <laughs> yes. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. So, uh, and you kind of have a type, right? I'd imagine you've been with a lot of video games. That, that's and, true. Yeah, my. I wasn't trying to suggest you're promiscuous. I just mean <laughs> of the people you've been with. Yeah, I, I kind of navigate more towards nerds. Yeah. <laughs> this research again. There's an underlying theme here. Men between 40 and 69 are having trouble with boaters? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, no, it must be this or the... No, <laughs> between 40 and 69, that's where boners go to die. <laughs> Everyone between 20 and 28 is excellent at sex because you can pump away until you pass out. <laughs> Dental babe Jesus has the opposite experience, Ashley, but hot cocoa Jesus agrees with you. Mm. Mm. I guess we need to do a study. Find me a video game enthusiast who's 63 years old and, and, and bangs like you've never been banged before. So, you know, whatever. That's where they're going with this. They, they claim this. It's guys 40 to 69. That's pretty typical. We start to grow erectile dysfunction. Between, sometimes we pray for it. Some, sometimes you welcome it. But they go on and on about, you know, you spend this much time in front of your computer and then their their libido or their, their uh, what do you call that stuff? Uh, uh, hormone levels, all that, whatever. More research is needed, they said. Yeah. Put a test on the young bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. They play video games for 16 hours and then have sex with 11 women. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that played out, Cubby. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be in the back of my mind if I was a big gamer. I mean, Waffle, you're a gamer. Mm -hmm. Dana, you're a gamer. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I want to go, but just think about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm an anal gamer. <laughs> Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Get your celebrity crush. You consider yourself a celebrity? No. <laughs> uh, never mind that. That's that local kid, uh, Jerome uh, Has Holmgren. Hasborough. What? Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren hitting on a gal on the internet. Smooth. Smooth. He Who's your celebrity crush? 
do you consider yourself a celebrity? Yeah, they were like internet gals. Yeah. They weren't famous gals. They were like, hey, we have a website. We have a, a, a what's the new term everyone uses now? Everyone has one. A podcast. Podcast, podcast. vlog. Or they have maybe a they don't podcast. Say that and uh, she says, who's your celebrity crush? And he says, do you consider yourself a it's pretty smooth move. Yeah, yeah smooth. that'd get me a little bit. Yeah. Would it? Yeah. That would work on you. All right, we got to get going. But first, I wanted to say word up to Army Mechanic Jesus, who sent in a hilarious picture to our little text machine. Uh, we've been talking about vasectomies this morning, because today, or this time of year, is a big time of year for vasectomies. Guys get snipped, they sit and watch the basketball games. Army Mechanic Jesus sent us a picture. I don't know if it's recent or from years ago, um, but he's lying on the couch. He's wearing sweatpants. And he said he got a vasectomy, and his girlfriend or wife loaded him up with snacks so he could lay on the couch and have a good time. Nice. And he's lying on the couch there with his sweatpants. He's covered in all the snacks that his girlfriend or wife purchased for him. She has altered the titles of the snacks to give him a hard time over having a vasectomy. For example, she bought him some milk duds. She changed the title to shooting duds. <laughs> <laughs> powdered donuts. She altered it to uh, read powdered no nuts. <laughs> ah, I thought that was going to go a little this further. Is, no, than that, that is cute. I, I've uh, seen that on um, like Facebook or social media before. Where well, you could fake it. They're you, like, you could fake it. No, where they're like waiting for their husband to come home from for the from the vasectomy, and they do that to like all the different candies and foods. That's that's a good one. Uh, I like the nutty buddy that he sent, where it says farewell to your nutty buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye to your f- Swedish fish. <laughs> nice work. Very funny. Don't don't go by th- this crowd. That actually was pretty funny what you did, Army Mechanic Jesus. NCAA basketball tournament begins for real today at around 11 o'clock this morning. Those guys are real. And it goes on all damn day. You can watch hoops on TBS, TNT, Channel 4, True TV. We can get into who's playing who. You know, maybe Randy Shaver wants to talk a little bit about some specific games, but it starts at 11 a.m. and it goes all day. Uh, Later on, we'll cover the winners and losers from day one of the Boys State High School Basketball Tournament. The Pigs more or less had their guts stomped out (laughs) at the L.A. uh, Who were they playing? The L.A. Kings last Mm -hmm. night. She was a 6-0 final final. Plenty more to cover. Don't go anywhere. Cubby's News is coming up. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Business has always been about turning a profit, making money. But can it stand for something more? Something beyond dollars and cents? We think so. We think that today, business has a higher calling, a purpose to be fair and just, to do right by their workers, customers, communities, and the environment. And it turns out companies successful doing that also do better for their bottom line. When you see the Just Capital seal, it means this company is a force for good. Visit JustCapital.com to learn more. Half-assed morning show. 93X. Principal of the middle school issued multiple statements to parents saying, We are sorry that this incident took place for not only the student involved, but also the other students that were present on the bus and witnessed the incident. A substitute school bus driver was arrested and fired Ah! after video showed him allegedly punching a seventh grader, leaving the young student injured. I want to make it clear that I'm not afraid to fight a seventh grader. (laughs) The incident began shortly after dismissal from Heritage Middle School in Missouri when the student said he was joking around with friends while boarding the bus home. But 67-year-old Scott Livingston, who just hashtag couldn't even that day, (laughs) told police he grew irritated at the middle schooler and thought maybe he was mouthing off at him. Oh. Livingston marched to the back of the bus, which was still parked on school property, then grabbed the young pupil. Sit down or I'm going to beat your ass, he yelled at the boy, who was seen in video being pinned to a seat, choked, and repeatedly pummeled, police said. 
Livington, uh, Livingston, then locked the doors and drove away when a school security officer ordered him off the bus with the children still in it. However, he was stopped by police about a mile away after students called 911. What did I do, he said. <laughs> what did I do? Everyone's so sensitive these days. Unbelievable. Police say when the doors opened, the students ran off crying. The driver later told cops he was trying to scare the boy, not hurt him. But the boy was left with cuts and bruises on his face and neck. Tell us about that old timer that kicked your ass, Josh. Uh, well, yeah, this is. I was. This was collateral damage. I was collateral damage. We were just biking around in a parking lot of an old folks' home, and uh, waiting on some friends to meet up there. And uh, an old guy. I mean, I'm gonna guess, boy, 80s, really, really old. Oh, very feeble looking. He came over, and one of my friends was popping off at him. And, he, he, you know, even I was like, dude, just let the guy. The guy was mad. He didn't want us biking around there. Thought maybe we were causing trouble. Hey, Grandpa, who let you out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's talking trash. And so I'm like, well, I just, I'm about to pedal away. Like, let's just go. And, and I'm standing uh, next to the guy, basically. He's a little bit behind me on my right side. And all of a sudden, I saw stars, like in the cartoons. <laughs> and it took me a second to realize he punched me. <laughs> I just happened to be the guy standing closest. Oh, That's awesome. And there was nothing I could do. I was so mad at the guy, and I kind of got in his face. And I'm thinking, well, I can't punch him. He'll die. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's barely standing. You should have punched him. <laughs> <laughs> There ain't no age limit on an ass whooping. <laughs> yeah, then I'm mad at my friend, like, hey, thanks a lot, jerkwad. I had nothing to do with that, and I'm the one that gets the abuse. He's probably dead now. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Uh, that thought did cross my mind. <laughs> He's been dead for decades, that guy. No, I'm. if his family's listening, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> Closer to home, a driver was sighted Wednesday afternoon after rolling a school bus with children on board. Thankfully, everyone's okay. Somebody rolled over a school bus? Yeah, yeah. The Washington County Sheriff's Office received a report about 4.22 p.m. of a school rollover, a school bus rollover uh, in Scandia. Six elementary age students and the driver were on the bus at the time of the crash when it, uh, the driver allegedly became distracted, struck a berm, and it caused the bus to flip. Luckily, it didn't result in any serious injuries. How the hell did no one get hurt when you flip over a school bus? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, thankfully, nobody did. The driver, a 61-year-old woman from Forest Lake, was cited for failure to drive with due care. That's too bad. Do all of those school buses do the seatbelt thing now? Do you know, Josh, does your son ride the bus? Yeah, he does. No, they don't have seatbelts. Oh. I did. Do some have seatbelts? I remember... Um, I had heard stories. Yeah, I remember some of them would have seatbelts. It would always be like the, the field trip buses. Mm. Always were the ones mm. with seatbelts. Mm. Never those thought. those yeah, kids either. on that, those kids are all future monster truck drivers yeah. <laughs> yeah. for surviving that sumbitch. They can, they can tumble well. Yeah. Troopers say an aggressive driver fired a shot at another vehicle along 35W in Minneapolis Tuesday. The victim said the armed driver was all over the road, honking at and passing other vehicles. At one point, troopers say the erratic driver slowed down, pointed a gun at the other vehicle, and fired. The bullet hit the fender. The gunman took off, and luckily no one was hurt. The investigation into that shooting is ongoing. That's fun, knowing that can happen. Friggin' pathetic. I feel like I need a gun. Everyone seems to be driving around with guns now. You don't got a gun? No. No, get a gun, man. What are you, some kind of amateur or something? (laughs) Yeah, I must be. Dude, I have a gun that shoots other guns. (laughs) That's how into it I am. In less violent traffic-related news, a Frenchman who had been in Norway for just over a month was handed a 21-day prison sentence for amassing 25 speeding tickets in 19 days. That's impressive. That's on purpose. I think the guy just couldn't learn a lesson. Um, He apparently went there in search of a job. Instead, he found himself behind bars. They called him a danger in traffic. Yeah. And uh, so he, a lot of his, well, most of the infractions... If not all, were registered by fixed speed cameras whose existence police say he was not aware of. So some of them might have shown up all at the same time. Oh, I didn't know you had those. That's a terrible trip to France right there. A scary moment was captured on MnDOT cameras as a hot air balloon was pushed into a power line, sending its occupants crashing to the ground. Uh, Did you post this, Ashley? Yep. Okay. Uh, Rochester Police, uh, 93X.com. Rochester police said the freak accident happened along Highway 63 between 40th Street Southeast and 48th Street Southeast about 6.50 p.m. Preliminary information indicates the balloon was trying to land in a field when a gust of wind pushed it into the power line. It caused the basket to become disconnected from the balloon. Oh, boy. A small brush fire broke out next to the basket, but it was quickly extinguished by firefighters. 
Police said the rest of the balloon was found a couple miles away. The occupants who were inside the basket, two uh, of those, two reported minor injuries, very minor, they said. The third was uninjured. Other people that maybe could get into motorsports. Pretty impressive. Cubby, Usually those don't turn out that well. No, yeah. Cubby knows this story. When my mom was working hundreds of years ago, uh, her, uh, her office decided to have a, an outing, you know, and not just, you know, well, let's go to the Twins game. They rented a hot air balloon and said, we're all going to jump into this hot air balloon and go for a ride. And my mom said, yeah, no thanks. That's not exactly my style of fun. And they said, okay, sucks to be you. You're missing out. And then a few hours later, they crashed to the ground and it broke everybody in half. Oh, oh my God. Because the pilot had been drinking or something. No way. That's so scary. <laughs> that's the thing. Those, those look like fun and I've always kind of wanted to try it. But you hear those stories about, oh, they survived the crash, but it was the ensuing inferno that burned them all up. <laughs> you just, you don't have enough control when my you're My mom up there. did say, she said there was a lot more elbow room in the office now that everybody's dead <laughs> <laughs> three texas boys ages 11 12 and 16 and dubbed the little rascals have been arrested for robbing a bank they're 11 12 and 16 two of them were turned over to the cops by their own parents while the third was arrested after being involved in a fight and getting recognized by law enforcement the fbi confirmed on tuesday the trio of youngsters 11 12 and 16 were in custody on charges of robbery by threat the FBI's Houston office said they were wanted for robbing a Wells Fargo a week ago today. The boys passed a threatening note to a teller before fleeing on foot with an undisclosed amount of cash. The FBI posted an image of the trio on social media showing all three of them wearing hoodies inside the bank's lobby. The parents of two of the boys identified them after their photos were released. Glad the parents did the right thing, but oh man, that is sad. I don't want to blame the victims in this situation, but I, I was a teller for a couple of years, and if some teenagers, not even teenagers, tried to rob me, I would just laugh hysterically. Get what? out of here. I'm not giving you anything. You know, maybe five years ago I would have. What but are you talking about? They're the most read dangerous any... people on earth. <laughs> yeah. If you were the ones with the guns, yeah. the yeah. cars. You would not have yeah. laughed. They, they probably have one of those guns that Josh has that shoots other guns. Yeah. <laughs> yep. A 12-year-old was involved, huh, Cubby? Yeah, and an 11-year-old. Well, maybe we should start fighting 7th graders like that bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've got a 12-year-old at home. I can still take him. Hell yes. Yeah. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> a low-life mom was caught on camera urging her young daughter to steal a purse from a Georgia restaurant as the thieving family skipped out on a $500 bill. Oh, this poor kid. Mooching mother of three, Kenya Butler, who's 27, was seen in security footage slyly pointing out an unattended purse in a booth at the Juicy Crab. Apparently, she told her seven-year-old daughter to go take it. Then they head out the door. Butler, who had another child in her arms during the March 2nd theft, had just finished a seafood feast with a large group of people, but the group left without shelling out a cent for the bill. After footage of the crime was aired on local TV, tips poured in to the Newman Police Department, helping them make the arrest. After it aired on the media, we received a couple of phone calls that tipped us off, and we were able to identify Kenya Butler as the offender in this case, based Ooh. on those phone calls. Police. That, wait a minute, was that a cop? Yes. That sounded like a kid. Everything, I don't know. <laughs> I got, didn't that sound like a child? Yeah. Police are still seeking a man who was seen leaving with the group for ditching that bill. An arrest was made Monday after a series of suspicious fires at a business in an East Boston shopping plaza. Just before 10 a.m. Monday, Boston Fire responded to an auto zone for what was a relatively small fire inside one of the aisles. Apparently, 26-year-old Genesis, Genesis Hurtado set some merchandise, specifically seat covers, on fire. We had smoke in the building when we pulled up and uh, a fire in that first aisle right there. No kidding. What the hell's going on there? Oh, it gets more weird. Employees said they were surprised by what was happening. It took me by surprise because what normal person will do that? Most normal people wouldn't do that. No, no. She, whoever that was is correct. Boston police said there were two other fires in the same plaza Saturday night. In one case, the woman went to a CVS and set some diapers on fire. Diaper fire. Diaper Don't name for a band, maybe. Uh, also, she went to a Marshalls to set a pair of pajamas on fire. In total, um, police said Hurtado admitted to setting all three weird fires. Just a little case of pyromania. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe add in some crack rocks or some meth rocks. Remember that time when 
That reminds me of our buddy Blaze there. Blade? Was it Blade or Blaze? Blade, in the mail room? In the mail room. Yeah. He set some jewelry on fire. He did. It was like a watch, I think. Sound like he kind of had a temper. Yeah. But he had a good point about Saturdays. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll tell them. Yeah. We, we just, on Saturdays, you can do whatever you want. You get the drink. Yeah, you get the drink on <laughs> yeah. Saturdays. Uh, shots were fired during an incident at the LA Fitness in Edina last night about 8 p.m. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight or not. When you're so close to such kind of thing, it's tough. I hear you. Initial dude. information suggested disturbance inside the building earlier in that evening resulted in the suspects leaving and returning. Officials say when they came back, a confrontation occurred where at least one shot was fired. People shooting at each other at the, uh, how do you call it, the gym? Yeah. Well, we're in a s- diner. I bet those were expensive guns. You don't hear about yeah. that kind of thing in a diner very much. We're safe, I guess, most of us. Oh, because it was at a gym? From being shot at the gym. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Unless, uh, like, we go in there to buy, like, a protein shake or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> go to one of those gyms that has the bars in them nowadays. <laughs> A drunken pilot who prepared to take charge of a transatlantic flight from Scotland to New York has been jailed for 10 months. Captain Lawrence Russell Jr. was caught with two bottles of Jägermeister in his luggage, one of which half empty. Uh, He was uh, going through an x-ray security machine and they saw the bottles. The 63-year-old Delta Airlines pilot who was wearing his uniform and wore a lanyard with the word Delta printed on it was arrested and subsequently found to be about two and a half times over the aviation alcohol limit. The prosecutor said the consequences could have been catastrophic. The pilot of a commercial aircraft holds the lives of hundreds in his hands, and he would have put all of them at serious risk. He showed a reckless disregard for the safety of his passengers and crew, she said. Ten months he's going to do. Sounds like, unfortunately, he's got a problem with the bottle. Uh, He's going through, or he did go through treatment, and hopefully things are better now. That's pretty scary how close they came, though. Yeah. Sent him through the spin dry, huh? Yeah. All right. Then in Nashville, when police asked a 61-year-old suspected drunk driver if he would perform sobriety tests, he refused, asking, why would I take a sobriety test if I'm already drunk? He was taken into custody for admitting that he was drunk. That sorts that out. Yeah. <laughs> why would I do that? I'm clearly hammered. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Making its prime video streaming premiere today, Roadhouse. Jake Gyllenhaal stars as a bouncer hired as head of security at a nightclub in the South. In this version, Dalton is an ex-UFC fighter, and the Roadhouse is in the Florida Keys instead of Missouri. The new streaming series Three Body Problem debuts on Netflix today. From the showrunners of Game of Thrones, Three Body Problem centers on a fateful decision in 1960s China, which echoes across space and time to a group of scientists in the present day, forcing them to face humanity's greatest threat. And now streaming on Paramount Plus, the season finale of Halo. It was on this day 20 years ago, March 21st, 2004, an online Yahoo News poll named Ozzy Osbourne the nation's favorite ambassador to welcome aliens to Earth should they ever arrive. (laughs) Matthew Broderick, 62 today. Gary Oldman turns 66. Happy birthday to Dirty Dan and your womb mate. Looks like three testicles swinging Jesus, both turning 27 today. Works too much plowing snow, Jesus. Text in a happy 16th to Miss K. Good luck on your driver's test today. And Dad said you can get that nose piercing. Happy birthday to Mia turning 20 today from Dad, hauling your wood, Jesus, and family. And happy 39th to Rectal Arson, Jesus. That's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Big time onions. Goodness. On the half-assed morning show. I personally have had my own instances with some of the sports gamblers um, where, you know, they got my telephone number and were sending me crazy messages about where I live and my kids. And so it is a dangerous game. It brings added pressure. It brings a distraction. You know, the amount of times where I'm standing up there and we may have a 10-point lead and the spread is 11 and people are yelling at me to leave the guys in so that we can cover the spread, it's ridiculous. I mean, it is something that I believe has gone too far. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Randy Shaver, it's just you today. Randy Shaver. It's just me, Just you. We had everybody in yesterday. That's the way it should be. Okay. Agreed. All right, you like the spotlight? That's right. We had every damn body in studio yesterday. Today, Way too many people. What more do you need? I felt felt very claustrophobic. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go, Randy. Just uh, Too many mouths to feed yesterday. No, I hear you. I agree. A little overwhelming. Well, like you've said in the past, you get paid either way. Doesn't matter how many people are here. As Steve Payne once said, I get paid the same whether I score a goal or don't. (laughs) Same thing. 
Uh, that would uh, that would have been right there in Cubby's intro. Cleveland Cavaliers head coach and uh, former University of Minnesota Golden Gopher. Uh, what the hell's the first name again? Just JB. 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 Uh, I forget the first name at times. His dad's name was what again? Bernie. Bernie. JB Bickerstaff. It's a crooked, awful world that we live in, Randy Shaver. You knew that already. Everybody knows that. Sure. And there's a lot of crooked, awful stories going around. And uh, they happen to be happening in the sports world the last couple of days. Um, That's J.B. Bickerstaff talking about how he's received threats from gamblers. Here we go, Randy Shaver. You wanted this so bad. (laughs) You wanted gambling to be a wide-open, friggin' Wild West-type scene when it comes to sports. And here it is, and everything's going sideways. He's... Poor kids. He's, there's people are threatening his kids. Well, and, I was talking and, to Nick about this a little off air. You know, people have been gambling on sports. Right now, it's just legal, and you right. would think it would kind of be the people that didn't care if it was legal or not that might be making some threats. But it's changed now. He says, and it seems so sudden. At least if you base it on some of the stories we're going to discuss today, it just seems so sudden that all of a sudden everything's going sideways. Uh, Bickerstaff says he's getting threats. Like Josh said, they're mentioning his kids and where he lives. This happened last year. He reported it to the NBA, but he brought it up when he was talking to the media yesterday. Kind of scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, things, things seem... there's a lot. There's a lot at stake for some people. You know, well, some for people... God's sake, be reasonable. Well, I I'm with you. Yeah. But I'm just saying there's a lot at stake for some people because they, for whatever reason. Um, they get hooked. They get hooked. They get themselves um, in trouble. And the last thing that any professional sports players, coaches needs is any scrutiny that they're trying to not make a line or shave points beat, whatever. shave points right. or beat the line or right anything like that that's the last thing that they need and that's why everyone well some people thought it was such a huge deal what rudy gobert did a week or so ago where he's motioning to the referee that the referee is on the take yeah man yep. J.B. Bickerstaff went on to say, he said, uh, more should be done to protect players, coaches, and others in the game. Jesus, I'm... I don't know what else you do. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just bracing myself for something awful now. Right. Well... I don't know what you do. No, you can't have cops following these guys all around. They got, got, uh, you know, other things to do, but it's just... And then, what the hell's going on with show high? (laughs) This is weird. It is weird, and I, you know, I'm not totally convinced the guy was stealing his money. Well, um, first, let, 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 for folks who don't know, before sure, we start getting into, not that I have all the information, because there's a lot of information on this show, Hi Otani. What a couple of days he's having. Yeah. We read yeah. yesterday, we read yesterday before, uh, you know, show Hi Otani with the Dodgers, before they played their first game in South Korea against the San Diego Padres, there was some, some kind of a bomb threat. They cleared out the dome that they were playing in. They had 350 cops on scene. They had bomb sniffing dogs up and down. Now, today, the story is, and there's varying editions of this story, an interpreter who's been working with Shohai since he came to America, and a close friend of his, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not just some interpreter that he runs into at the ballpark. Hey, dude. uh, Started with him when he was with the Angels. This is a friend of his. Yeah. Was accused of stealing Shohai's money to place bets with an illegal bookmaker. In the tens of millions of dollars, yeah. um, the interpreter's name is Ipai Mizahara. He was stealing Shohai's money. He's that's making, what they're alleging, yes. That's, that's the first story. But the second... And, and, yes, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say the second part of this story is then the guy goes on television, this uh, Muzahari guy, Mizahara guy, and... Um, it, it feels more like Shohai was trying to help the guy. I mean, well, he, I, he paid off his gambling debts. Paid that's, off his that, gam- that's that's the story. Okay, is that Otani paid off the debts, and this guy apparently ESPN found out about this, and so they the interpreter agreed to do an interview yeah. with ESPN. They do the interview, but then they don't run it because they get new information that possibly Otani, you know, maybe the bets were 
being that they were his bets. Yeah. And that the interpreter took the fall yeah. for it. Yeah. Mm. Oh. And so now the you've got this whole issue here, this scandal that we don't really know the answers to right now. Don't know for sure exactly how this is um, shaking out. And, you know, I don't know. I'm sure Major League Baseball is investigating, but I haven't seen anything yet this morning. Is it possible that show high, that's where everybody jumped on social media? That this uh, interpreter is a fall guy, that show high is this Pete Rose, Michael Jordan, gambling addict type guy. Oh my God, what a kick in the nuts that would be to oh, Major yeah. League Baseball's image and all that. You, you, who knows? Yeah, I mean, we. The, the story is that he paid this guy's gambling debts for him to get him out of debt. But right. then, after some investigation, they, they've determined that he stole the money from Otani. Which, you know, the whole thing's just kind of a mess. It is. You know, it really is. And I don't know. I mean, we're, we're not to the bottom of it right now, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. This is going to go on. I think this was gonna, this one's going to go on for a while. Mm-hmm. Woo-wee. The, yeah, there's some layers here. <laughs> the biggest star in Major League Baseball, maybe yeah. the biggest star in all of sports right now, right. Shohei Otani. $700 million or something the Dodgers are going to give him. Yes, Wapple. Who pays the interpreter? Is that the Dodgers or Shohei? I'm, I'm sure the I'm sure the team is is paying Why for the interpreter. Why do you ask that question? Well, I was just... Uh, I don't really know, but I'm... I, I, I guess so. <laughs> But I'd also imagine the interpreter's got to be making some pretty good change, too. Yeah, but he's not making that kind of money. Oh, no. I mean, I bet he's... I don't think it's anything you know, outrageous. Unless, I mean, unless, unless Yo, uh, Shohai is also paying yeah, him mm-hmm. away from the baseball field to be with him, too. I mean, because I think he follows him everywhere. Yeah, I'm right. guessing he's making a decent living, but I don't yeah. think this is like any Puff Daddy type of a scene or anything <laughs> like that. You know, yeah. he's an interpreter. He's not, you know. Right. So there you go. Oh, that's crazy. And, of course, they're playing. They're in the midst of a game right now in South Korea. And you want to talk about uh, a crap show for the Dodgers this morning. Uh-oh. Their star pitcher, this Yamamoto, who they spent all this money on, Uh-oh. <laughs> lasted an inning, gave up five runs Ooh. in the first. Ooh, that's <laughs> and, not they're, good. and they're getting – but the Dodgers have clawed their way back. It's now 11-8 to eight San Diego on the top of the seventh. So it has not been a pitcher's fest for sure. Mookie Betts is homeward. He's knocked in four. Otani's got a hit again in an RBI. Uh, San Diego just lit up the Dodgers uh, early in this game, but Joe Musgrove got bombed. He gave up five earned runs in two innings. So uh, it's been a it's been an offensive uh, gong show. Gong show in South Korea this <laughs> Boy, morning dude. between these two teams. That three hundred million dollar ace. Yep, they got. Yamamoto oh, lasted oh, an dude. inning. Oh, I want the Dodgers to lose every game this year. It's just, <laughs> I mean, maybe he's just a little nervous being in the big. He might right? have been. Yeah. Probably was. Yeah. I thought and, you, you know. Just- Spring training's a lot different than the real oh, deal, Oh, hell right? yes, it is. So, you're, you're pitching against college kids and yeah, JV yeah. guys mm-hmm. a lot of the time. And yeah. I thought you were going to say the guy's arm came off or no, something like no. that. <laughs> no, but his ERA starts at 45. Oh. That's his ERA. <laughs> hey, can, can only go down from here, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a few people here texting in on the show high Otani gambling scandal. And like I said, this is just we're going to be talking about this for months, I think. Um, and maybe these are people like myself who are maybe hoping for the worst just because it's more fun to talk about. Uh, but a few people are texting in. Look, Shohai's people, Shohai's camp has already changed their story three or four times. That's pretty friggin' shady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what grabbed me was this interpreter, Mr. Mizihara. When he went on ESPN, so they did. They never aired that, Randy. No, I don't think they did because okay. they got new information, right? And then they they scuttled it because of the new information. So at least that's what I read last night. Now, fair that may enough. Have changed. I don't know. Maybe it aired. Maybe it didn't. Who cared? Uh, who cares? We have. You know. I think we have all we know or all we need to know right now. Um, I read a quote from Mizahara, and it just was. Here's the quote. Obviously, this is all my fault. Everything I've done, I'm ready to face all the consequences. That's just a little too direct. Mm, yeah, you know what I, I mean? agree. <laughs> yeah, this is shady. 
I like you know, it though. If you're taken, if you're truly guilty, I think there's a little more of an explanation. You might, you might. Uh, I'm I'm, tr- I'm having trouble finding right. the words. You're a little more scattered, and and maybe try to give folks some background on yourself to explain yourself. This guy just said, "My fault. I'll take all the consequences." Yeah, you usually would try to cushion your fall a yeah, little bit. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect way to put it. That's that comes off shady. But again, maybe I'm just one of those who's hoping for the worst because it's more fun to talk about. A listener sent a link to an NBC Los Angeles article that said the interpreter makes between three hundred and five hundred grand annually. At least he has wow. since 2017. Dang. A couple listeners also. A chunk of change. A couple listeners have also texted in if you if you've heard this conspiracy theory in the in the past when Michael Jordan retired to play baseball. Right. Some folks said it was because of gambling. It was right. a secret suspension. So they're wondering if Shohei is going to do a reverse MJ and go play in the NBA for a season or two yeah. and then go back yeah. to baseball. I bet he could average twenty five six <laughs> points a night. Yeah, yep. I bet he could. Yeah, Michael Jordan had a huge gambling issue. Yeah, oh. he did. Uh, Oh, God. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very well documented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him and Barkley would go to Vegas and just <laughs> vomit. Atlantic City or yeah. whatever. They yeah. would just deuce, vomit, whatever term you want to use, millions of dollars. Yep. <laughs> on the golf course, and they too. Were, and apparently, they weren't very good at it because they would lose that kind of money. Yep. And the golf course, they would bet, you know, $200,000 a stroke or something oh sick like that. Oh, my gosh. What a life. On game days, too. Like, Jordan would, like, lose a million dollars on the golf course and then go play and score 35 points. <laughs> Barkley be having Barkley be having a three-way at four in the afternoon, <laughs> seven o'clock game start, you know. Has anyone here ever full-on taken the fall for somebody? Took all the blame for something you didn't do? Hmm. Gosh, I don't know. I don't think so. I was just telling the story about my high uh, my high school buddy who lit our school on fire. Now, I didn't take the fall for him. I didn't say it was me, but I was certainly protecting his ass. I was, and he never thanked us for that. That's the closest I could come up when my buddy set our high school on fire, and I got to <laughs> sit down. I got it was oh it was no big deal no pressure I was just sitting there with the principal the superintendent of schools uh, the fire chief and the police chief <laughs> no That's big a good deal friend right there. no big deal uh, yeah, yeah I was, I've been a part of a group that was accused of something and I didn't do it but I didn't you know say one way or the other so I might be a little different I just took the fall with everybody else you took a beat. instead of narking on who yeah who did mm. it yeah you ain't no snitch. You took the you took the beating, but not necessarily the fall. You ain't no snitch. And now the guy that I was protecting, did he saw the head off a of baby Jesus from a statue in the courtyard? Yes, he did. Oh, gosh. <laughs> was I accused of it? I was amongst about three other people. I didn't say a word. Oh God! People are texting in when they've taken the fall. Very interesting. Text us in if you've full on taken the fall for a friend or a family member. Here's a listener, AV Geek Jesus. One of my coworkers backed a 1,200 gallon fuel truck into a light post at somebody's house. I knew the owner well enough to know I wouldn't get in trouble, so I took the fall. Hmm. I told the owner I did it. You're a good coworker, dude. You're a great coworker. I dig it. All right, a more scandal. This dude. Call Brad Ryder. See if he needs bail money. No, wait. Stand down. It wasn't Brad. Yeah, it wasn't Brad. Uh, When I clicked the link, I was kind of (laughs) hoping. Yeah, me too. I'm like, oh, that's not even close to Brad's name. No. A former Timberwolves employee has been charged with stealing strategic information from the hard drive of the head of the team's analytics department. He's in jail. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was interested if if Brad would have a take on this, if he knew the guy or... You know, Not only like did he yeah. steal the hard drive, but then he he uh, copied it over onto some device at his home so that he had, you know, he had taken it and, you know, then copied it over. So he had the material on a laptop or something at home. Personal information. Right. Contract information. Contract Player information. Contract his name is Somak Sarkar. He's 33. He's in jail. Well, maybe you want to call Brad? Somebody just call him? Yeah, give him a call. 
They, what they call him a disgruntled employee. What, Brad, too? I guess you could describe Brad yes. as that. We're asking one disgruntled employee to comment <laughs> to on another. About another. Yes. <laughs> what kind of jail sentence would you get for that? I, I, well, like, I thought I'm the thinking... Timberwolves aren't pressing charges. Oh, okay. I thought they said they're not, they're not pressing any criminal charges. Because this... I would think it would just be like a huge fine instead of... I have Who no, knows? I mean, no idea. Like, if it's sharing company secrets, you can go to jail for that. I mean, oh, sure. it's, a, it's a damn, what do they call it here? It's a third de- felony third-degree burglary. Oh. That's got to count for something. What, what secrets could somebody share about 93X if they stole company secrets? You don't want to effing know. <laughs> no. Our business. <laughs> the secret is none of us have any idea what we're doing. That, that, well, maybe that's not a secret. Maybe that's not a secret. You don't want to effing know. You know, yeah, I don't know what kind of secrets. I mean, they do, you do sign something, right, saying you're not going to share company secrets, but I don't think I know one. Right, yeah. I never signed anything. What do you guys want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Any answer from Brad Ryder? It's like Wapples on the phone right He's now calling him. sleeping. Them. Crooked some bitches everywhere, Randy Shaver. Look over your shoulders. Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's one down the hall from you, the wife. Yeah, oh, boy. She's looking to take you down, I'll tell you that. The NCAA tournament uh, begins for real at around 11 o'clock this morning, Randy. Here we go. Uh, It goes on all damn day. You can watch it on TBS, TNT, Channel 4. How do you call it? True TV. Anything blowing your skirt up overall on the games today? Or as far as who you like to show up in the Final Four? You know, I, I really don't have... A team other than Iowa State that I obviously am partial to, and they're a number two seed. Right. Um, I really don't have a good feel for, you know. I, I mean, have no idea who anybody I, is. I don't think the number. <laughs> I don't think the number one seeds, other than maybe UConn, are unbeatable. Purdue has proven they can lose. Uh, so has North Carolina. Yeah, true, so is Houston. Iowa State beat Houston oh, by a lot. Yeah, Purdue, so, has, I mean, Purdue has proved that they can lose. Yes, it, it, last year, game one, mm-hmm. they proved they can lose. Yeah. I your, mean, I th- I, I'm reading here that 24% of the people that did brackets picked UConn to win it all. And so, one of my I brackets, mean, I have UConn winning it all. Yeah. That's how you do it, Ashley. I saw, yeah, a funny meme. That, I saw a funny meme yesterday. It was a picture of a guy like, intently writing things on a whiteboard looking kind of confused and, he, and the thing said me filling out my men's NCAA bracket when the only college basketball player I can name is Caitlin Clark right. <laughs> <laughs> I follow the Golden Gophers and that's it I mean I do watch a little bit we'll get back to this I understand Brad Ryder's on the phone Brad Ryder good morning you want to comment on this Timberwolves scandal? This is probably what you've been waiting for for years. No, I, I, I was sweating bullets yesterday because I was worried that it was me they were coming after. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just said, I kind of hoped when I clicked the link it was going to see that. your, your I, I, shot I, I, in there. I wanted, I wanted so badly to reply in about five different ways, but I thought, nope, this is social media. I don't yeah, want to do that. Yeah, 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 Wapple, yeah, yeah. Tells us, uh, Wapple tells us when he called you, you were going through some computer files. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was shredding yeah. some documents. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, was. I, had to, in the background. I, I had to switch over to my real hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a sledgehammer yeah. out. He put a drill bit through it. You got anything? So did you know, first and foremost, you don't have to share anything you're uncomfortable with, but did you know this person? No. When you were, okay, he wasn't no, there this, when you were there? this person was, was relatively new um, in the new, I, I want to say the new regime. I mean, there's been so many regimes over the years. Right, but, right. Um, this person was in the new, kind of the new regime after I left, so. All right. Yeah. So are you familiar, like, with what he took? Um, not really. I mean, it's pretty easy to. I mean, I, I'm not an IT guy by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's pretty easy to to copy a hard drive or to take a hard drive and copy it over. I don't think it's that difficult. Well, the poor bastard's sitting in the cooler, as far as we know right now, and they're pretty pissed off. But Josh said, uh, I, I didn't read that. The Wolves are not going, or at least for now, they're not planning on pressing charges. Yeah, they they figure the guy, he screwed himself enough. Uh, have at it. You know, go live your life. Uh, you screwed up enough. Yeah, I don't so, know if somebody else... So if they're else... not pressing charges, then why... So uh, they're not going to... Uh, so why was he... He was arrested, but he's going to get let go? Is that the deal? I don't what? know. I don't know how oh, that okay. works. Um, I... 
but you know, they one of the things they said was the person whose hard drive it was had some personal things on there, and I was wondering if maybe the person would be like, you know, we don't need to investigate this fully. <laughs> yeah. We got it back. Yeah. No need to dig into no, the files. No, we got him. I, you heard what I said's on there. <laughs> well, but didn't okay. So I only read part of the story, par- partially because I didn't think I was coming on here today to talk about it. But I think wasn't it wasn't it uh, Gupta or wasn't yes. it his hard drive? Okay, it was. So. Yeah. Yeah, if, if he had personal stuff on there that they didn't want out, that leads to, another, I guess, another question. Um, maybe they got to handle that on their own. I don't know. What a nightmare. Total yeah. nightmare. Well, there no, you I go. Took, when, when I got let go, I took my computer with me. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I did. I, I did. Um, and I, I shouldn't probably say this, but, I, yeah, I, I, I took it with me. You got some good so, stuff on so there? Huh? Got some good stuff on there? I don't know. I haven't logged into it in years, but yeah. I, so, Brad, in your experience, when there's contracts that are done for players, who who in the organization would have would have access to that information? This person would most likely. I mean, if if I'm understanding his role, I mean, again, the, this guy's the vice president of yeah. the team, so he would obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, how many other people would have access to? That? Um, not many. Um, yeah, not not many at all. I mean, the, the GM and then you know this person's hard drive. I think he was number. I think he was number two under Rosas at the time. I, I honestly I couldn't even tell you. Is he still there? Is Gupka still there? I don't know. I don't okay. Know. Anyway, I know. I know he was. I know he was with Rosas. I know Rosas hired him. So, um, but he was his right hand guy. So he would have had access. Yeah, he would have had access to all the contract information. F, so. F this noise, Brad Ryder. What's the dirtiest secret you learned while working in <laughs> professional sports? <laughs> oh boy. The dirtiest. Leave names out if you have to. The dirtiest secret you learned while working in professional sports. It's like an Josh. This is like an episode of Inside Edition right here. <laughs> You ever watch Inside Edition? I love that sound bite. Quang. <laughs> I used to watch that growing up. Quang. And then they say, dude with two penises broke into a bank. You know, it's... Did yeah, I, I'd heard, I'd heard, um, and I'm not even going to say the place that I work, but I work three places. Yeah. So you can narrow it down. Uh, I heard a couple upper level management people would go in and hack into people's computers after hours to see what was on them. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. What? Oh that's scary. Yep. Tell us a real story behind the knuckle push-ups. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I missed passed. that by one year. Oh, you did? I missed that by one year, yeah. You, what, what, are you, what are you doing, Brad? What were you doing? Do you want to stay I, on with us, or you got somewhere to go? No, I, I, was, I was grading. I was sitting in my office grading papers, so I'm fine. I okay. can stay on. All right. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. You got anything to say about this friggin' basketball tournament? Randy was just talking I, about the Iowegian State Ball Club and this and that. I literally just filled out our hams bracket about 15 minutes before I got on with you. Oh, I got to do I that. Just, I just did that right before I started grading here. What yeah. are we doing, like 20 bucks a head, or what are we doing? Is that all? We can I don't go know. more than that. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't well, how I don't do we care. do Did someone do a computer thing? Or yeah, we, yeah, you should have yeah. got an email. What? An email. Oh, Christ yeah. almighty. Friggin' email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, I'll look that up. Send me a text message. Send me a text. Randy Shaver, the Iowa. You know what? Send, send me the email, will you, Wapple? And not a text message? Uh, so see. then I can do it on my lap, or I can do it on my... Uh, okay. Computer. I can I was, see, I was send it six, out to everybody. I'll send yeah. it again, though. I was the yeah. sixth one in Dana, Wapple, Ashley, a couple other ones. Were 20 in. bucks. Yeah, yeah I want to I want to do one. Can we agree on 20 bucks a head? Sure. Yep. Deal. Sure. Winner I'm take Imagine all. State, yes. Uh, yeah, let's just, I don't know. We'll figure that out later, for Christ's sake. They play South Dakota State. I got a text from uh, Skull Dippin' and Spittin' Jesus. He says uh, he's a South Dakota State Jackrabbit fan. Randy Shaver, you want to make a friendly wager? Uh, sure. On today's game. <laughs> sure. Okay, he said sure. Uh, what else? Uh, Michigan friendly State. Friendly meaning I, if I win, you pay, and if I lose, I don't pay. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a friendly wager. <laughs> Michigan State plays today. Illinois plays today. A lot of games today. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll check it out. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I got to do a... Oh, this is funny. You know, we told the story of Dan Munson. <laughs> Oh, he, he had was a great, great press the conference. news conference. Yes, he was. He <laughs> you, got, was awesome. you got audio of that, Josh? Just give me one second. He was awesome. Dan yesterday. Munson, we, we talked about him, former Golden Gopher coach. He lost his job at Long Beach State. They said, you're not welcome back. But go ahead, finish out the rest of the season. Then his effing club wins their conference tournament. They get an automatic bid to the damn, uh, how do you call it, the uh, big dance. Uh, but he, you know, he's 
He's a dead man walking. He's fired. He's just playing things out. And he had a funny comment when the media put a mic in his face. You guys see the Seinfeld when George Costanza was trying to get fired and couldn't get, <laughs> lose his job and still going to work every day. And that's me. I'm a Seinfeld <laughs> episode going on right now in, in real life. <laughs> he also had a great line. I don't know if you have it, Josh. When he met with his players for the first time after they, re- after they heard the news that he had been fired. And they're having a film session. Do you have this soundbite? No, I didn't grab this one. I, I, okay, so they're having a, a film session. And he's talking about, he goes, look, fellas, he's, it's like their first possession of a game that they had just played. And they, the defense was bad. And da, da, da. We need to be doing this. This is the kind of thing that gets a coach fired. <laughs> the, he, said, he said the whole room just broke up laughing. That's good. And he said, And he said that broke the ice with us. And everybody's good. We're all in the... You know, working hard together, and so yeah. I said the other day, I, I worked with him for a couple of years. I was around him a lot. He's a for good a man. Years. He's a good man. He's got yes. the driest sense of humor on the planet Earth, <laughs> and he doesn't give two rips what you think. He, you know, good and, for him. and that's that's exactly why he decided to coach his team because most other coaches would have just said, "Okay, well, I'm gone. I'm cleaning out my office. I'm gone." He looked at the AD and said, "Okay, you know what?" I'm going to coach yeah. the team and show you, yeah. you know. And I'll guarantee you, this run that he's had will get him another job. Oh, for when sure. This is all, because people are going to look at that. Just like uh, Mark Few defended him, the Gonzaga coach, yeah. at his news conference, defended him and said, you know what, he's done everything uh, classy, and Long Beach State has not. Yeah. And I think I think that's gonna, this is going to go a long way for him. Golden Gopher men's yours will be oh my God. The Mets need somebody to head up scouting, and we think that someone might be you. So you need me to get fired. We didn't say that. We couldn't say that, because even if we did... We couldn't say that we said it. You see what we're saying? <laughs> even streaked, and they wouldn't fire yeah. him. They liked his, they liked his uh, machismo. Mm-hmm. Golden Gopher men's basketball club will play Steph Blurry. Yes, awesome. and, oh, and the Indiana State Sycamores on Saturday in round two. Saturday or Sunday? I have Saturday in front okay, of me. Okay, cool. Indiana State beat Southern Methodist last night with Steph Blurry, Larry Nerd, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, whatever you want to call them. Hell, they put up 101 points. Steph Blurry scored 13 of those points. That'll be, uh, oh, uh, see, now I have, okay, now I have new information here that says Sunday. They'll play this weekend. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sunday at 1. Sunday. Yep, 1 o'clock on Sunday. Milk Chamberlain, whatever. <laughs> Milk Chamberlain. Oh my God. That's great. This is what we've been. This is what we wanted. You yeah. know. Yes. Not, it's awesome. Not many folks go too uh, mental over the NIT, but if we no. get to see Steph Blurry, they did. They did back in Clem's day. Back oh, in Clem's well, yeah, day was a good day. Yeah. I always made big runs. Oh, yeah. I mean, way way back when. Yes, I guess yeah. someone texted me the other day and said, "Isn't the NIT kind of a tournament of losers?" That's kind of the way folks look at it these days. But years ago, it was a hell of a deal. Yeah. Getting really to New was. York was a big deal. Getting it was. To play Get at Madison, Madison Square, Square Garden. Garden. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I was uh, with the Gophers when they made that run. It was fun. Oh, I, I was so much fun. Loved it. Uh, winners and losers from day one of the Boys State Bicycle. How do you call it? The Boys Bice, State uh, bicycle? bicycle Tournament? <laughs> That'd be a hell of a tournament. Probably one of those. <laughs> the Bicycle Tournament went like this uh, yesterday. The winners, YZ, Cretan. Egan. Egan in Yeah, the upset. my Egan Wildcats. Minnetonka. Upset. Tatino Grace. De La Salle. Mankato East. Alexandria. Breck. Minnehaha Academy. Albany and Lake City. And there's a yes. lot of There's a, a few more games today. Quarterfinals today. The smaller towns. Yep. Cherry. Russell, Tyler, Ruthton. Mountain Lake area. Comfrey. Nevis, West Central area. Where's that? That's the West Central. <laughs> In the area. You go a little west, you go a little to the middle there, and you find the West Central there. Heritage, Christian Academy, Fertile, Beltrami, and Good Hugh. I think the 4A semis are tonight, too. Okay. Yep. Television yep. coverage tonight, I would have yes. guessed. Yes. Yes. Yep. There you go. All right. We still Farm- got- Farmington lost a heartbreaker. It was well, yeah, yeah, the mayor on from Farmington. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, they lost a heartbreaker to Crete. Uh, that that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. All right. So, what's the deal now? Um, Alex Rodriguez and whoever this Mark Lore dude. 
they are pretty close to closing the deal here well, and they becoming found another investor. Yeah, they're back on. Yeah, well, an investment firm, an equity yeah. firm. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty yeah. close to closing the deal and becoming the majority owners of the Temple Bell and the. I Leafs. think this is the last payment that they have to make. All right. Here we come, Las Vegas. It's yeah, it's a it's a little bit more complicated now because this equity firm's involved, but yeah. And did we uh, did has a Rod? This sounds maybe like we've heard this before, Anthony. Anthony Rodriguez. What the hell is his first name? <laughs> Alex. Alex Rodriguez Alex. Uh, hinted that retiring Kevin Garnett's jersey, yes, will uh, will happen once he you're, gets the reins. You're not going to do that. Then move the team to Vegas. They're not going anywhere. Well, they're going to. They're not going anywhere. Retire KG and then move to Vegas. No, they're not moving to Vegas. I know, it's Randy. At least I pray that they. It's not going to happen. Good. good. This 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 good, good, place good, good, is good, good, basketball good. crazy right now. Yeah, we're having a good time. Just so I mean, if people care about the process at all, when this equity firm gets involved, but that's, we don't, Brad. We don't. Okay, never. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll skip oh, it. I, I was going to say, it's just that the, all right, fine. The the approval process gets a little bit more convoluted because the league has to go in that now and take a look at each one of these individuals in this equity firm and make sure that they're not shady people mm. to put it most simply so all right but it'll be fine it's just going to take a little longer the pigs more or less had their guts stomped out by the la kings last night she was a six nothing final final yeah wow she was over in the first period, basically. Mm-hmm. It was described, at least I saw. I, I did watch the first period. I did. And it was 3 nothing. I think, when that uh, mm-hmm. when that session closed out. It was described in the paper as an ugly effort by the Pigs. Anzi Kopitar, longtime member of the Kings, had a goal and an assist. He hit the 1,200-point mark in his career. Wow. He passed Dino Cicerelli for fifty no. <laughs> for fifty first on the all time scoring uh, list. Dino. Don't even say anything cute about Dino. Dino Cicerelli was a god in this town before yes, some was. of you were born. Yes, he was. Before a lot of you were born, he was a god. Yes. So the loss, LA, however, keeps them still within three points of Vegas. So they're they didn't really lose any ground last night. I mean, they lost a game in hand, but they. Didn't lose any. They points. lost a little pride. Yes, they got. Well, you know the Kings are good though. Well, Kings have, are, mm-hmm. yes, they Kings are. Kings have are having a good year. They looked like the. the, the I yeah. watched one period of hockey, but they looked like the far superior hockey team. Yeah. Oh, they were skating circles around us. Hey, our guy Marcus Foligno scored a goal last night on his own team. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of my youth soccer career. That could happen, can't it? Mm-hmm. St. Louis Blues are in town Saturday. Very sad to read that Chris Simon. Yeah. Yeah, very sad. That's very sad. Has died by suicide. 52 years old. Played 15 seasons in the NHL. He had a brief wow. uh, brief run with the Pigs. And it's another one of these terrible CTE stories. Yeah, it just goes to show you, you just never know what's going on in people's lives, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, 52. Yeah. That's That just ain't right. Won the Cup in Colorado in 96. Played in the Cup Finals a couple more times with Calgary. I think that was, what, 98? Played with the uh, Washington Capitals in 99. That was a great run the Washington Capitals had in 99. That's when he had that hair, too. Yeah, he had the long hairdo. Very long hair. Long hairdo. Uh, but for you hockey dorks, I loved the 1999 Washington Capitals. They made a great underdog run all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, 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 and then they ran into those puke bag Detroit Red Wing bastards. <laughs> but, I mean, there was a lot of Minnesota connections on that club. Phil Housley, Brian Bellows, Mike, uh, Mark Tenorti, uh, whom I'm missing. There were some Minnesota. Um, tributes are pouring in from teams and, and, and athletes all over on the passing of Chris Simon. He was one of those tough guys who could also play. Yeah. He really could put. He had hands. He did. Not just for throwing. Sad, sad story. Yep. All right. I think yesterday I said, I said, hey, the Vikings, do you care? And you guys said no. Uh, And I think the story was they signed a cornerback. Okay, let's try this. They signed a couple of linebackers. Do you care? 
No. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I will in August. But no, don't I love it. I do. Now. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. Doesn't hurt I mean, my pride yeah. at all. <laughs> Noted NFL fan Nick over there is very upset. We don't want to talk Vikings <laughs> right now. I'm okay. Surprisingly, I'm okay with that. On March third, what are you? What are you? Twenty first. Yeah, March twenty first. Right. Sorry. I'll care a little bit about the draft. I know you won't, but the quarterback oh, thing's intriguing. Yeah, the absolutely. The draft's yeah, going to be very, sure. very fun to watch. Nobody cares about the draft. No, that's not true. People <laughs> that's, do. Care yeah, I, I, I care about that. You're wrong, Nick. Oh. You're wrong. First time for everything. By God. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, how about? You know, here's some football stuff, though. I don't know uh, how how serious this is, but coaches want to get rid of the kickoff altogether and just start every drive at the 25-yard line. Here's my take on that. Who well, cares anymore? They've mangled the rules so badly in the NFL. Who really cares? Yeah, but when you do that, you take away jobs. You're taking away people that make a living on special teams. Well, they can um, go play in the XFL and the, what do they call it now? The sure. The USFL. The US I mean, XFL. I, I, they have watered down the kickoff so much. So what does because, it even matter? Because of injury, yeah. um, preventing injuries. So just get rid of it. Yeah. I, Those guys will find gigs in the US XFL. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Right? Right? But then then uh, maybe they'll uh, make some money in that league, right? There'll be all these... F it. They've mangled it so bad, what does it even matter anymore? That's the way I go with that. Uh, Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder, real quick. What kind of cars do you drive? <laughs> why? Don't ask why. Well, uh, this is going to be good with Brad. I know what he drives. Uh, you know what I drive? Oh, boy. Oh. I, I drive a Jeep Gladiator. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be perfect. Randy Shaver, why? you go. I drive a uh, Nissan Rogue. <laughs> oh, that's good, too. Right, these are good. These are good. A genius listener. I don't know how the hell we didn't think of this years ago, right, Josh? Yeah, I, I feel like a fool that it's taken us this long to learn this. A genius listener. Test this guy. Test him for brilliance. He texted in earlier and said, do you guys know this? He, he says, if you put the word anal in front of any car model, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> And we said, what's this guy talking about? Anal. If you put the word anal in front of any car model, it's funny. Anal gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> anal rogue. <laughs> and so I, I said to Josh, I said, delete this guy's number. He's crazy. And then we started rolling through, and he's right. They're all funny. <laughs> <laughs> anal avalanche. Yeah, of course, anal probe, anal expedition, <laughs> anal canyon. Aren't you glad we asked? <laughs> Anal Explorer. Anal Gremlin. <laughs> a couple of my students nicknamed it the Bradiator, though, now. Oh. So. Hey. Bradiator. Hey, if somebody yeah. else gives it a nickname, that's not right. bad. Right, yeah. If you yeah, called it yourself like that, that. Yeah, then that would be... Wow. Yeah. The Bradiator. Oh, yeah. Anal Wrangler. <laughs> anal Ranger. Anal Ram. We've had that. Before. It is funny every single time. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, they, uh, who was this? Anal Town and Country. <laughs> More anxiety than hair Jesus said it works with last names too. Anal shaver and anal rider. <laughs> God help us all. Anal pinto. God help each and every anal fiesta. That's a good one. <laughs> you guys want to come to my party? <laughs> oh, my anal fiesta. What are you serving? At the anal fiesta. <laughs> Pork butt. Corn. Corn. <laughs> yes. Lots of corn. <laughs> Cabbage and corn. Oh, my. oh, man. All right. We wanted to play that game with you, and we did. We can move on. How about this unbelievable story of heroism before we go? This UFC all-timer by the name of Mark Coleman is out of the hospital after saving his parents from a by God house fire. He's uh, he's still recovering, but he's he's out the hospital. This was a hell of a story. I was reading about it here uh, today, yesterday, kind of a thing. 
Early in the morning, fire started in the kitchen of this Mark Coleman's childhood home. It did kill his dog. That's terrible. Oh. Hammer. I'm, I'm sorry? His dog was named Hammer. Oh. It's a pretty cool name. name. Yeah. The house was burned down to the screws, but he was able to pull his folks out of there, and it almost killed him. There is a GoFundMe if you want to throw a little money his way. It's already surpassed the goal of $100,000. I didn't remember this guy. I mean, not that I've ever been an encyclopedia of uh, UFC information, but my brother was really into it, especially in the early days, and I I usually recognized the names. I did not recognize his name. I recognized him by face when they showed a picture of him, but yeah, the name, I couldn't pick pick up on it right away. But for a while, it sounded like he wasn't going to make it. Thank goodness he's okay. He became the UFC's first heavyweight champion back in 1997 when he defeated Dan Severn via the neck crank submission. Oh, Oh, I'll dump a neck crank on you and you'll evacuate your little bowels. (laughs) I'm lethal with that neck crank. So good for him. Glad you made it. Sorry about your bubby. Yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. It's no fun when you lose the bubby. No. Especially like that. All right, boys, there you go. Tomorrow, I think we'll have a little dad fight segment uh, cut out for you, but uh, I hope you both have fun watching the hoops and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Get, ready for, get ready for some snow tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And worse over the weekend. It's going to be a fun commute. Or in Monday and Tuesday. Sunday through Tuesday sounds worse. You know who it yeah. sucks to be? Cubby. Why? Nine times out of ten, that's not true, but no, today. I, go ahead. It, it, it sucks today to be Cubby. I think you mentioned, you mentioned this on the air yesterday. Josh took all the sandbags out the back of his pickup. I'm, yeah. I'm still recovering. This was a few days ago. It's my fault. Now he's got to put them back in. I got to put them right back. Well, I have movers scheduled to come on Monday morning. Cancel oh. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Cancel. I could, I could use them. Oh, to lift your sandbags. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you driving? Me? Oh. Oh, I'm driving an <laughs> anal ram. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you goofy bastards. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Right. Okay. Tap ass morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Hey, everybody, this is Dan Bespris, host of Fantasy NBA Today, a daily fantasy basketball podcast. We cover every box score from every game every day, plus bonus shows on buy low opportunities, players to stash, schedule analysis, and really anything you could need to smash your league into deliciously tiny pieces. Catch the Fantasy NBA Today podcast, part of the Believe Network on YouTube or wherever you listen. Fast Morning Show 93X. All right, what is it now? It's 829. Welcome back to the half Fast Morning Show. What a terrific crowd you are. It's Thursday. Things are uh, feeling all right. Hope uh, it's the same story for you. What do we got going on? Oh, uh, earlier we were talking about that wacky-ass uh, Shohei Otani situation where... Ah, uh, what's the story again? His interpreter may have been stealing money from the wildly rich Shohei Otani to pay off gambling debts. To pay off gambling debts. But some people think that this interpreter is taking the fall for his famous buddy. Some people say Otani's the degenerate gambler and this this poor bastard, this interpreter friend of his is just taking the fall. I asked, uh, have anybody, has anybody out there ever smooth up straight up taking the fall and taking all the blame for something that you didn't do. Gotta have a fall guy. Got a couple of text messages. Just a couple. I didn't think there'd be a ton because it's kind of a it's, you know, it's an interesting situation to find yourself in. Well, first off this first text, what do you think about this? Now the opposite. First off, what do you think of the opposite where you put the blame on somebody else someone completely innocent 
and it works out great for you. What do you th- what do you think of a person like that? <laughs> I would never do something like that. They put the blame 100% on someone innocent and it worked out beautifully for him. You I wouldn't, but you know who would Wapple did? Oh, what, what? Wapple what would do it. Uh, okay, I did it. Yep, Wapple would. <laughs> I can believe he would. He's a oh, shady I don't little, think so. I don't think Wapple ever would. He's a shady and crooked little pe- I did we- that with my parents all the time. Explain yourself. You blame someone like else? Like if they if they found something they shouldn't have like oh that, that that's not mine that's oh, that's this person that joint belongs to my friend yeah it never really worked that's out that's not well. my liquor bottle those aren't my condoms I feel right? like your parents are probably smarter than that yeah after like <laughs> the first not, couple times that's not my penis pump <laughs> <laughs> here's an example of someone who put the blame on an innocent person and it worked out perfectly for them this is from bacon loving craft beer snob jesus he said i ripped off a wicked fart Mm. And I convinced my wife that it was our baby who just made a mess in his diaper. She went to go change him, and he did have a dirty diaper. Oh, perfect. (laughs) That kid's got your back from Mm -hmm. a very young age. It worked out perfectly for him. Remember the stupid news story a couple years back where there was a guy who uh, kept doing that at the dinner table, and his wife... And he would blame the dog every time. Yeah. His no. wife was so concerned that she brought it to the vet and had like some unnecessary surgery. Oh. Yep. And it became like a huge deal. I do remember that. That is hilarious. I did mention that to my fiance the other day that I wish her dog, I wish he farted so that I could, you know, he, if he was a known farter, then I could use that anytime. If I actually let one go, I could just like, oh, it must have been, must have been Charlie over there. Oh, uh, gross. You're not one of those fart couples, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't fart in front of each other. But I'm saying if it, if it were to happen someday, it would be convenient for I, me. I, able to, I, I understand. Okay. I was just curious yeah. if you're having fart conversations that you might be one of those fart couples. Mm-mm. Good, I, good, uh, good. Uh, good. Uh, one of our dogs is the loudest farter I've ever heard. Oh, really? I mean, it's comical to the point where I'm like, there's no way that came from the dog. <laughs> Who brought their uncle in here? Yeah. I love when our dogs fart and then they get startled by it and they're like looking at their butt like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Last night to my puppy was hilarious. I told, you that, I told you Wapple was shady. <laughs> Just what he said right there gave me the creeps. <laughs> All right, how about a couple people who did straight up take the fall? Here they are. Texted into the program. Listener says, I took the fall for a new hire for a, a train derailment. <laughs> Whoa, that's a big deal. Dude, you are a good co-worker, good friend. He, he took the blame for a train derailment so this new hire wouldn't get fired. Instead, he says, I got fired. Oh, oh that sucks. LOL, he says. <laughs> oh, I like the LOL. <laughs> That's Taze Wapple again, Dweebus. I got blamed for deleting something uh, around here, and I just didn't deny it because the person that had done it w- had so many things against him. I thought for sure he's going to get fired. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I just uh, I just didn't deny. I never admitted it. I just didn't deny it. You're a good man. That's Cody. as close as it came. But I figured, yeah, you know what. <laughs> Had I known what he would become, I should have said, that guy did that. I should have ratted him out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you learned later that he wasn't worth sacrificing for. Oh, not at all. Sucks. All right, here's a, this one's tough. Personal finance Jesus. He says, my wife traded seats in a car and took a DWI for someone in high school, and it's haunted us on her record ever since. Wow. That sucks. We had a good guy in high school. We were seniors in high school. Party got busted. Cops come in. Everybody's getting underage drinking tickets. He somehow had the driver's license of a guy the year before uh, ahead of us who was a freshman in college somewhere. And he showed him that license and said, yeah, this is me. So that guy got written down for a ticket. He never told the guy. So all of a sudden, he didn't show up in court, obviously, because he didn't know that he got a technical minor. Right. You know, he had no idea. It turned into a huge... Huge legal mess for the guy. Did the oh, older guy? Awful. Did the older guy kick the younger guy's ass for I, creating all this trouble? I, I, it got really nasty because he, so. he had to prove. You know, he had to have alibis. Like, no, I was on. I was out of state in college on campus at the time of this party <laughs> that I had no idea was happening. Fat, it was, it's a huge mess. Fat Lebowski said one time he got blackout drunk a while back. Someone had the audacity to crap in his pants. <laughs> so he had to blame the dog. I don't know if this would count, but... Um, we'll tell you. 
when say like uh, me and my boyfriend have plans for something that we don't want to do I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, I'm like, just tell him I don't feel good. Tell him I have a headache. Blame it on me. I okay. don't think it falls under the same category, but I, I see where you're going with that. You know, that's, yeah, it's that's, just that's, easier. That's just, no one's, no one's being hurt by that. Yeah. You know? And finally, real quick, then we can change topics. If you, if you want. Uh, always creepy when, this is kind of creepy, Josh. I got a text. And it's coming from inside the building. <laughs> oh. Just like in the horror movies. Got a text that's coming from inside the building. This is from Meter Replacer Jesus. He says, I'm replacing the electrical meters inside your building today. Can I get a shout out? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was also going to shout out Meter Tech Jesus. There's two of them? Yeah, who's literally keeping the lights on for us today. So <laughs> Someone keep an eye out the friggin' studio window. I don't want those guys coming in here. <laughs> I thought maybe it was going to be a complaint from our cohort down the hall that text you received because I almost just took out Tony Lee from KQ. It was I almost just knocked him on his ass walking around a corner too fast. Oh, that, oh, that and he's happen. one of my favorite people of, of all time. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't take much. That guy's elderly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got a question for you real quick. We don't have to dwell on this much. It just grabbed me. I have a question. Whatever happened to Led Zeppelin? Has too much time passed now to where Led Zeppelin's influence has run its course. The reason I ask is uh, there's another survey taken and they were trying to decide every uh, state in our proud union um, the favorite classic rock band of every state in our union in America and Led Zeppelin only showed up once and the state is New Hampshire. There's like 11 people that live in New <laughs> That's crazy to me. Has enough time gone by now to where Led Zeppelin's influence isn't what it used to be? Well, there was a few on this list that I thought, I mean, just only one or two states, like ACDC, if I remember, didn't show up on very many states. I I thought that'd be much higher. There's some just these legendary acts. ACDC only showed up from the folks in NODAC. They search Google this and that. You know how they do that stuff with the funny computers to try to figure out what every state's favorite classic rock band was. Led Zeppelin only showed up in New Hampshire? Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm, I'm only 26, and that Led Zeppelin would be in my top three. There you go. I, w- I wouldn't even think of, they wouldn't even come top of mind Ooh, nowadays. Led Zeppelin would? No. Really? Just well, I guess you're, as, you're younger. As a classic rock band, no, it wouldn't. Like really? Pink, Pink Floyd would, um, Bob Seger. Okay. I mean, it, 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 everybody's different. Well, you know? you know, it wouldn't for me. Guns and Roses, yet that makes the list, and I think even here in Minnesota. I, I, really? I guess I know that they play them on classic rock stations, but I still can't think of them as... Classic rock. Yeah, oh, not at all. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, that, that's, yeah, like Metallica's classic rock now. That's that's like, a, yeah, uh? that's also a factor, is you're, you're hearing bands referred to as classic rock now. Um, that, bon Jovi they consider classic rock. Bon Jovi, of course, was number one in stupid New Jersey. Over Springsteen, huh? <laughs> they need to pull their head out of their ass. Oh, you know, I didn't even think about that dope Bob Seger ripoff Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I don't see him anywhere. No, I'm looking at the map right now, too. That That is notable. Mm-hmm. The bands that made the list, some were just one state, some multiple. Fleetwood Mac, Judas Priest, the Ramones, the Beatles, only one state, Nevada. Queen, multiple states. Steve Miller, Steve Miller Band. <laughs> What's wrong with the people in Montana? Rush, Grateful Dead, Scorpions, Doobie Brothers, Metallica, The Guess Who, Kiss, Guns N' Roses, ZZ Top, Black Sabbath, Santana, Van Halen, Chicago, Leonard Skinner, The Eagles, Blondie, CCR, Bon Jovi, The Electric Light Orchestra, Thin Lizzy, and I've never heard the Truman Brothers Band? I wasn't familiar with them either. Mm-mm. Yeah, I had to look that one up. I had no idea who they, that was. So that's Georgia. Are they from Georgia? Never heard of them. But anyway, that just grabbed me. And it's crazy to think that time has led folks to say, led who? You know what I mean? But that's how it works, you know? Yeah. It is pretty jarring, though, like back to Josh's point, when you hear a song you grew up with on the oldie station for the first time, and you're like, what, what, where, where did the time go? <laughs> what happened here? I mean, when I was going to high school, there was the hard rock crowd, and then there was the Led Zeppelin crowd. You know what I mean? They didn't really mix much. The Led Zeppelin crowd, they were kind of aloof. Go ahead with your silly, long-haired 
metal with your you know zeppelin was a totally almost like a a higher power more anxiety than hair jesus said gosh it sounds like led zeppelin isn't uh getting a whole lot of love <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch is that a, is that a pun uh, that, that's a pun isn't it it yeah. is a pun and yep. it's a good one all right how does a 99 percent discount sound to you sounds awesome that is a great Pretty discount mm. all right so social media has been talking up and down about this if you could receive a lifetime 99% discount in any single industry, which would you choose? They gave you six choices. They gave you six choices. And here are the results. 32% said luxury goods. Now that would be a 99% discount on things like jewelry. Your brand new clothes, man designer clothes and iPhones and things of that ilk luxury goods jewelry designer clothes and iPhones I have no interest in in that type of thing no I'm good I'm good there okay Mm -hmm. 20% said transport this is the one that I'd take stuff like Ubers Uber rides uh, airplane rides gas and even repairs to your motor vehicle. Yeah, oh, fuel yeah. And, and repairs. Ninety nine percent. I'll take those. I'll take what those. Was th- are you okay? I just that burp- was in the radio like it was nineteen ninety nine. I just burped on air. <laughs> I, I forgot we were on air. Yeah, without hearing the other ones, uh, def- definitely this one so far. Yeah, this one sounds pretty great. Okay. Yeah, gas is a lot of money. Fixing your car is a lot of money. I don't care much for those airplane rides, but I see where you're going with that. I just I just filled up my car for 15 cents. I'll take yeah, that. Oh, <laughs> that would be just beautiful. All right, sir. Mm-hmm. We got a brand new transmission. We're going to need $25, please. Uh, <laughs> it's a 99% discount. And it's what, Wapple? Like the old NWA black and white. It's what? For life. That's big. 99% <laughs> discount. Okay. Oh, I need a whole engine rebuild. 35 bucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To me, it sounded like Josh just made that same joke, but uh, we'll move on. <laughs> well, it's different. I said transmission for 25 He just raised it 10 bucks. And I don't know. Different. This is a liquor talking. 17% said uh, folks said they wanted that 99% discount on taxes. I'm good. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are good, Wobble. <laughs> What, what, why do you say you're good? <laughs> me and Dana were talking about how we had to pay into taxes last year, and he's like, not me, suckers. <laughs> you did? I, I have, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I miss the days where you get a refund. The government loves me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were fun days. 16% utilities, gas, electric, water, internet bills. I can pay that. That sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, you could pay those with all the, the money you're saving on gas. That sounds pretty good. That one sounds good to me, but I haven't thought about it much. 7% said insurance. Mm. Everything included health, car, life, home, ski. That one sounds pretty That's, good, too. Yeah, it's not that, bad. that does sound pretty good. Huh? At, that should be Ashley's number one. She'd never have to pay for a doctor visit, hospital bill. Oh, oh yeah. dude, I would have no debt, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that's a good one. She's always at the hospital. Mm-hmm. It's my second home. And then the uh, smallest percentage of folks said entertainment. That's mine. Going to a rock concert, a motion picture, your streaming services, video going games. out to eat, sure, video oh, games. I didn't think of that. I'm surprised this one's not higher. TVs? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, TVs would then be. Although a 99 percent computers, a 99 percent discount on a concert ticket these days still means you're paying about 400 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> they are spending. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't really spend a ton of money on that stuff. I mean, going out to eat, I guess. They're, I think I but would... they, they called it fine dining, so I oh, excluded oh. that one because I don't, you know, do any of that. No. So you know, people are texting in some possible loopholes. Talk to me. And uh, I guess I didn't consider this. People are saying. You'd want to pick the luxury one because you can flip the stuff you buy. So mm-hmm. if you, I mean that, I was just taking it Literally, as it was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you can flip some of this stuff. And Josh, I believe uh, from what I'm reading in the survey, 
they made a rule and it was none of this flipping stuff. Right. You have and to that's take how it, I took yes, it. Yes, you have to take it as is. So you can't mm-hmm. be buying, you know, 99% discount on designer jeans and then selling them on eBay for 700 You can't do that. It's not part of the deal. dollar house. Here you go. <laughs> Ooh, what about a house? Where would, what category would that fall under? That has to be luxury, right? Well, no, because I don't know. Gotta, they don't. Yeah, they don't have. N- well, it wouldn't be utilities. No. Ah, well, maybe you, maybe they don't include. Uh, what did, that that's a good one. Ninety nine percent off my house. Yeah. Ooh, that would be slick. Yeah, if they could throw something like that on there. Mm-hmm. It, it, would it be utilities? Because technically, mortgage. Well, it's not a utility. Yeah. Gas, right. electric, water. Right. It, it shows up in the mailbox with the rest of your utility bills, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. it's not a utility. I mean, you could try and argue it with your mortgage company and see how far it goes. <laughs> see, there was a poll on Reddit. <laughs> I'm just not going to pay it. I want to be there when someone makes that phone call. Hi, I'd like to cancel your service. Yeah. I no longer need those bills in the mail. That is funnier than hell. So there you go, 99% discount. What a way to the what a way to live that would be. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. (laughs) They can get pretty big. They can get 10 foot, 150 plus pounds. And they are a predator. On 93X. There you go. I'll tell you what, we're pretty close to wrapping this nightmare up. And, uh, you know, take a big bite out of that snowstorm that's coming our way. Oh boy. Tonight, it's going to be a completely different world when we're heading in tomorrow morning. Fat Lebowski is texted in to warn us about the weather. He said, be careful driving in tomorrow morning, Brotherhood. Roads are going to be slipperier than Wapples Whack Wand. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. No, Wapples I like that one. Whack Wand, he says. We're having a conversation about 99% discounts. Sounds nice. Some social media dork threw this out. If you could receive a 99% discount in any single industry, which would you choose? There were six choices. The majority of folks said luxury goods. Some folks said transport. Some said taxes, utilities, insurance. Finally, entertainment. Now, I got a couple of texts. One listener said, what are you, nuts? You take the taxes. It's an immediate twenty dollars to $30,000 a year pay raise. Is that how that works? I, depending on how much you make or how good your tax attorney is or whatever you got i don't know yeah we got to get around to that now here in the next uh, few weeks don't we yeah i've been putting that off but again you get a 99 percent discount so it's not like you're buying things as you would now right you get a 99 percent discount on throw out electronics you've got a tv every square inch of your home you've mm-hmm. got all this kind of stuff it's tough to choose, isn't so, it? I mean, yeah, you could yeah. you could make up for it. But if they had real estate on there, something like that, obviously you do that. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, listener texted in and says, where are the hookers? Uh, <laughs> That'd be under your entertainment. Oh, okay. yeah, I suppose. I suppose entertainment. Strip clubs, too, probably. Uh, someone texted in with a lot of exclamation points and just said, child support! <laughs> <laughs> they want 99% off of uh, child support. Anyone know anything about that? I haven't had to pay it. I know folks that do pay it. I know a friend that had to had to pay it, and it was it was a lot of money a month. Well, I just hear my friends talk about daycare bills, and that just frightens me. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. That's like a mortgage. Mm-hmm. Daycare and diapers were brought up. I mean, we're getting specific now, but you know, whatever, we can we can go ahead and do that. Child support, daycare, and diapers. Diapers are expensive. Youth athletic equipment. A listener says, do you know what it costs to put a kid on a hockey team these days? Oh, oh yeah. Man. Well, yeah, it's not just hockey anymore. I used to think, you know, hockey was its famous for being expensive. Yeah. But shoot, my stepdaughter was in softball, and that was out of, out of control. I oh, guess you could just, uh, one, one thing you could just add to the list would be, like, child expenses. Anything that has to do with you, your children. Yeah, sure. Chemical sales Jesus wants a discount on scratch offs and Powerball tickets. <laughs> <laughs> when do you get to use, when do you get to hold the remote again? Me? Yeah. What do you mean? Don't you get to hold the remote when Grandpa's done watching the Powerball? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this person uh, says they pay four hundred and fifty dollars a week for daycare for one kid. Jeez. Wow. One of our listeners texted in to say, I need 99% off everything. I'm still living with my mama. <laughs> Is she hot? 
Orton Lover Jesus mentions vet bills. How about vet bills? Yeah, they're mm. not cheap. Yep. Oh, no, yeah, they get you. I know folks who just won't go there. They just won't. They won't spend money uh, on a pet? Not a dime. Oh, wow. Yeah, my lo- my do- dog just had her leg amputated Whoa, two just months let her. ago. What? And what are you talking about? Wait, how come you didn't tell us that? I did. You did? Yep. We Were talked we here? about it a little bit. This is the dog that ate off one of its own legs? Yeah. She, and then it had the rest of it amputated? Yeah, because she stopped using her leg, and when they stop using um, their, their joints like that, the bones kind of just dissolve. So it was either amputate her leg for, uh, you know, thousands of dollars or put her down. Oh. And she's only three, so I was like, all right, bust out the credit card. Oh, man. That's fascinating. Sorry to hear that. But her life is so much better now. It's crazy. I I wish I would have done it three years ago. Do they? (laughs) I wish it would have took your leg from you three years ago. Yeah. Do they donate uh, what's been amputated to a doggy burn unit or anything like that? I've been wondering that. What do do you do with the leg? What do they do with all that bone and flesh? Can I get it back? Chew toy. (laughs) Yeah, pet smart. This person says uh, (laughs) they sell it as a chew toy. Yeah, pet pet smart. That's what you do with it. Uh, You know what? Maybe you should grill it up. Oh. (laughs) I've never tried dog. 99% 99% off condoms, this person said. Mainly the top 99%, but they want 99% off. This person <laughs> says, I pay over 3000 for kids in daycare every month, which doesn't include the two-month-old that will be going very soon. Oh, my Dude. God. Sucks. Somebody's got to start pulling out. I, you know, at 3000 that's the most I've heard. I've heard in the twos, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a former neighbor who was paying over two grand for that. I can't believe it. I don't know how you do it. How do you do that? And you got to start applying for daycares and stuff before the kid's even born. What yeah, if you want a good one. Mm-hmm. My neighbor? Yeah. He's, uh, he deals in narcotics, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's a home builder. And uh, finally, I got a text. This just cracks me up. It'll probably only be me, but uh, a listener texted in on the topic of all these 99% discount. I spend this much on this and this much on that. Uh, dude texted in one of my favorite lines ever uh, from the television program Beavis and Butthead back when it first started in the, what was that, Josh, mid-90s, yeah. early 90s? Yeah. I don't know what they're doing now. I know you give updates once in a while on the new Beavis and Butthead. I still haven't gotten The around. most recent season wasn't great. But when it first came back, Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead, it was pretty awesome. One of our listeners thought this would this was a fitting comment. I remember one of the early episodes of Beavis and Butthead. I don't know. They're standing on the street doing nothing. And uh, I don't know what they were trying to get their hands on. And again, I apologize. Maybe you had to be there. It'd probably only be me. But Butthead turns to Beavis and just says, Uh, uh, let's go, like, get some money. (laughs) I died on the couch that day. (laughs) If it were that easy. Let's go get some money. I just thought that was friggin' brilliant. Thank you for that, whoever texted that in. You're a great crowd. Scrolling through Facebook on the can, Jesus just wants everyone to know pants, 99% off at his place right now. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Happy 10th anniversary to heavy equipment operator Jesus and his super hot MILF wife, Cheryl. He said he'll be taking her to Pound Town this evening. Oh. Oh, sounds fun. Happy birthday to Baked Baker Jesus. Happy 35th to Liz. And right now, before we get out of here on the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, if you text the word entertainment, why make such a big word for a text word? Entertainment to 651-989-9393. That's your shot to win tickets to WWE Monday Night Raw. That's happening July 29th at the X, furnished by our friends at XL Energy Center. You have a great day and good luck and stuff. The 93X and FM Morning Show. 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now.